In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that, Papi. The help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public So why can't you lie? Why can't you steal? Why can't you allow the citizens to be? You see, we just tell you that why we vote tell you. But you screw us, you screw us, you use us and later on abuse us. So why, why, why? They want to make you lie. Why, why, why? But that's the question that we ask.
The people who are so The people love to us My people, where you at? Where you at? Wake up on your stomach, stop sleeping. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Whip your hands, whip your hands, whip your hands, whip your hands. Come on, come on, come on. I know you're sleeping now. You gotta whip us some more, yeah? Okay, let's go. The people lie to us. The government betray us. I say we tired with their lies. We tired with their promises that led us to all our damages. We tired with that speech they preach in the and now you need to deceive us. The thing we saw it frustrate us. So why can't you lie? Why can't you steal? Why can't you allow the citizens to be? You see, we just tell you that why we vote tell you. But you screw us, you screw us, you use us and little and abuse us. So why, why, why?
Go and register to vote. That's yes, it. Power. I'm going now. I'm it's going all now. in the game. It's all in the game. Here, there, and everywhere. Here, there, and everywhere. The people keep on crying. The Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Um, and uh, uh, Pia, Darlington, Jupal, and uh, Jerry, it's, it's, it's good to have you all join us today. Um, today is uh, Friday, the uh, 17th day of uh, of March. The year is uh, it's 2023. And <clears throat> we're, we're glad to be back. Uh, this is the uh, the class reloaded. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Johnson, saying uh, welcome to everybody. Um, the class reloaded comes your way Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the uh, following radio stations. Uh, that's Bourgeois Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrado, Premium FM 98.1 in ba Banga, Bon County, Radio Tupa FM 89.1 in Grand Paso County, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Vongerman, Lofa County, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5 in Maya Gibi and of course, uh, Voice of Compa FM 106.5 all the way there in Nima County. As we say, I share the show. I don't see a lot of you um, sharing the show on, on Wednesday. Um, the Dean of Student PR gave you all an F as a grade uh, for for the fact that they, <clears throat> they didn't, we didn't reach the uh, the required benchmark today. I still see only a very few persons have shared the show. Um, we come here every now and then um, with the hope that uh, we can provide information, but at the same time also you have a part to play and your role is to help us reach as many persons as we can and uh, and then uh, that way we can we can cover a lot of land spaces in terms of our outreach um let me say welcome to our panelists i have today um, joining us in the studio um jerry Ligny, matthew pia um michelle jupaul all the way there in banga bon county and of course um our regular friday um uh, panelists um um, Darlington, Darlington Collins. Um, I'll have uh, Jerry also joining us. Uh, Jerry Yimpa, once he settles his uh, his position in camera, instead of moving all around, <laughs> we're breaking, we're breaking all day. But it's been a, it's been, it's, it, you know, it's been a good time. It's a good time to be alive. Uh, lots of uh, uh, new development happening across our political landscape. Uh, lots of issues to talk about. Um, as we always, we start the show with. Uh, of our trending issues, and then we'll move into the conversation. Today, we'll look at a couple of things. First, we'll look at the the release from the um, from the president of the um, University of Liberia, um, Reverend Dr. Uh, Zaulu Nelson, indicating that uh, student politics um, at the university has been suspended until otherwise order. Um, we'll also look at President Weah uh, departed the country today for. Um, Europe uh, for UAE and the US. Um, we'll look into what's in there, uh, what Liberians can expect from that trip. And then we have a breaking news, um, which is um, <clears throat> the family of uh, of the late Shalom Musu, uh, that's Gloria Musu's um, um, deceased daughter, um, received a communication today from the government. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll look into it and uh, talk about it, including other pressing national issues. Let me recognize a few of our students in class. I see Pris Pris. She, she's been inviting a lot of people. Thank you very much for um, for that. I see um, Peter Glee. If you share the show, just say present and I'll share so that we can recognize you. I see Peter Glee. I see uh, Chokon, uh, Bar, Samuel McGill, um, Arthur Smith. Um, Victor Logan, Sandy Gege G. Scott, uh, Phoebe Warite, um, Clarence Benson, Catherine Flomo. Um, let me see who else do we have. Afra Cowboy, um, Ruth Pine, Moses King, Shek, yeah, Sheko, Shek Sako, what's up, my brother? Uh, v. Jamunde, uh, Moses King, uh, Ruth Pine, Nat Bamo. Uh, Joe A. Jr., Elizabeth, Joy Franklin, Ephraim Harris, John Okabia, watching from Philadelphia Airport. 
um, Andrew Jejua, T. Kevin Shetton, Chokong Ba, Henry Eto, Kona Morgan. Uh, how are you? Uh, I brought out David, Davis uh, Nemo, uh, Prince M. Montgomery, uh, Lucy Aku, J. Augustine. Um, Momo Sandy Man, he said, I share over 20 to over 20 percent. That's good. Thank you, my brother. Uh, Tony Zodua, Clarence Josiah, uh, J. William Yanti, Prince Sando, Teofilos Jibwe. How are you, Teofilos? Been a while, William Chala, David, David, uh, Dennis David, Patrick, Prince Montgomery, uh, C. Uh, J. Gali, uh, Luke, um, J. Gali. Let's see, uh, let me see what do I do. Che Gale, I see um, Luce Aku, um, see um, Godwin Doe, he said President James K. Collie Wajima of Philadelphia, Sekou Dukle, um, Natoma Williams, Sam Nasa, Jerry Zuba, Gideon Scott, Kuntuan Yala, David Obele, uh, Dante Caro, Dante Caro, Kari, uh, Barbara Mayonga, Shirley Miller, Bradley Brown, Samuel Barnes. Uh, Ramsey Bayou, Tenning Nyon, Benjamin Blamo, uh, Clara Way Howard, uh, Emmanuel Gibio, uh, Mampon Tabo, and uh, all of you wonderful people, uh, Nico Soa, Louis Gobian, uh, John Saturday, Amos Bena, Seku Tukle, um, Wayita Fambule, Wieta Fambule, Abraham Siafa, is watching from Pinsville. Um, Mohammed Sharif, Fobi says she shared over 25. Thank you, says Fobi. Um, guys, gentlemen, it's, it's good to, um, that you all can join us. Uh, let me see. I see James Ford. Yeah, Mapu Hall, you are the first uh, today in class. Uh, Mapu Hall, it's good to have you here. James Ford, Henry Thomas, um, Safiatu So, Samuel Roberts, uh, Michael Bobby Boo, <laughs> says on. Um, <laughs> Wilma Dwe, Elder Ebenezer, Tokpa, Willie Hina. Um, how was Suning? How was Suning? Is uh, watching from Minnesota. How are you? How are and uh, uh, Sewa Wonye? Uh, she said, Sewa say, I'm in. Yes, good to be in than to be out. It's good to have you all join us. Uh, we're about to start. Uh, we hope that we can have a very interesting conversation here today. Uh, Jerry, if, you, if you're ready, just let me know. Um, come on live so that we can. Uh, Bring you on, on, on set. I see Stephen Copa says, Stephen Copa says, I'm watching from Banga. Uh, Jupa, the radio station on in Banga, right? Yes, the station is on here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I see uh, Deborah, Paul Johnson, uh, Masaya Song. The way Jupa before Snow said, you're not even sure what he Regina answered. Benson, <laughs> Lawrence Butler, Anita, Flomo Zuba, Thomas Jima. I see yeah, everybody. Yeah. The great uh, uh, Ernest uh, is Sebri Duma Duga. Seb Zor, all of you, Henry Wama, James uh, Butukwa, Prince Dolly. So, where is Daniel Sano? Daniel Sano has been a little occupied, uh, uh, Prince uh, Akapon Johnson. How are you, Akapon, watching? Um, um, so, let me say, you know, it's good to have you all here. It's, it's hope that we can have a great show. As usual, we begin the conversation with what's trending. We'll go around the table and ask our panelists to talk about trending national issues. Um, the issue should be void of the, the uh, what we have to discuss. So there are other issues that you think is um, newsworthy that you want to talk about. Um, let's say a big welcome to all of our folks also listening in Radio Land. Uh, I am your host, uh, Stephen Johnson, saying uh, a big welcome to all of you. Let me begin the, with uh, Jupal. Jupal, what's the latest from your end? Thank you, it's good having me on the program again tonight. And Trenton from my end, and number one is the issue of the lower denomination of the Liberian dollars bank note. note. Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually scarce on the market in Bonk County. So I was able to speak with some of uh, the local vendors in the county. And they said, uh, they are actually losing on a daily basis because the, since the government brought in the new Liberian dollar bank notes, they hardly see the, the, the lower denomination, most especially the $5 and $10, as well as the $20. So I, I, I spoke with some of them, I mean, as to how ready they manage in getting, I mean, the change they actually gave to the people, they said. Normally, the era, I mean, gave out the, the $10 as a waiver, that which is their profit, they said, they either gave it out to the people 
uh, if they don't really have the change or maybe they, they, they either take the person on a change that is the, the $5, $10 or the $20. And they actually called on the national government to actually see ways in making sure that uh, the lower denomination of the Liberian dollar is actually in the market and it is uh, actually flowing across the people for smooth transaction. And secondly, trending from our end tonight, uh, Mr. Fasul Sharif, who is Bonn County Commander of the Liberian National Police, uh, on yesterday, uh, confirmed to journalists that uh, he actually received information regarding the brutal flocking of Mr. Joseph Bidna by the uh, district Matiti representative. But he said they are actually uh, carrying on the investigation to ascertain a fight. But then this is the question that many citizens continue to ask. You know, the incident happened since February, early February, uh, the incident happened. And the representative actually denied that, oh, yes, I didn't do it. And, but later he came out, and in fact, he was boasting of doing it. When he said, I beat the devil or the guy. In fact, all, all sort of uh, reckless statement he was making. So then this is the question many citizens continue to ask. What extra fight are you looking for to actually uh, have this guy apprehended and turned over for proper investigation? After going out on um, Mr. Boasting, and he beat on this citizen because the guy was was actually building in his in, in, in his way going to his house and he, he actually said the guy can build there and then what extra fight you will need to actually have this person arrested and turned over to the court but earlier on uh, mr bender has said uh, the police was actually uh, i mean playing play mr trying to put cold water in the entire situation because he said he went there the guy said my man for carrying this information on the radio we can't just have it aired, or means we can just handle this because he took this information to the radio, and we never actually wanted to be there. So because of that, we can actually, I mean, do something about it. Only because I mean, journalists are persistently, I mean, advocating for this guy. That's the reason he's coming up now to actually, I mean, give some speech regarding that. And lastly, from my end uh, tonight. Uh, CDC in bunk, the re-election bait, many citizens have actually said they are not going to vote them again because of what many feel uh, the means a continued abuse of power by the lone representative they have in bunk. His continued abuse of power and his, his inability to actually represent the people of district number three properly. So many citizens are saying they are not going to vote the CDC comes October 10th. But aside from that, uh, the CDC in Bonk is heavily divided from this, our controversial district Matiti representative Marvin Cole, who if he's not in the news today for flocking, he's in the news tomorrow for, 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 for stealing. Or if he's not in the news tomorrow for stealing, then he's in the news uh, another day for confusion. Is that because of this guy, they are not actually going to vote the CDC back. And aside from that, CDC has failed on, on uh, half, missing one half of their promises made, that's made to the people of Bonn County, ranging from the completion of the Bonn County Technical College, uh, ranging from the pavement of the Banga Minch Creek, uh, ranging from the completion of the Salive Market, that which the vice president promised that she was going to complete as soon as she's given state power to I mean, represent people, uh, the Liberian people. But up to first time, I mean, they are yet to live up to their commitment. So many citizens are saying this government has actually failed them. And it is a scam and a complete political wire. So they said they can actually vote them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Michelle. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, what's trending from the end? Jerry, we can't hear you. You need to log on and log by on. Uh, um, while, while we work on Jerry's um, uh, microphone, 
Um, um, darling, John, what's, what's trending from your end? Well, a lot of things. Uh, I just want to pick it back on Jupal's uh, trending issue. So I've been following um, in the politics in Bond County. And you see this lawmaker, Marvin Cole. He speaks very troublesomely that one will wonder that whether this man is actually a lawmaker or he's actually instigating violence and preying on the gullible nature of our people. Marvin Cole tells the people in Bond County that because somebody attempted to build, I think, somewhere closer to his land or whatever. We all know in Liberia, the, the issue about zoning is, is really a problem. You know, Stephen, when you want to build your house here, somebody, because you're in the back of this guy, he don't care. He would just maybe put his outside bathroom right in front of yeah. These are issues that the Ministry of Public Works need, need to get to and address these kinds of stuff. But to have the lawmaker telling people that when people want to do this, you order people to flog the man out when Jesus went to the temple and, and people were, were trading in your father. It's very, it's very worrisome, especially, you know, in our country, Stevie, when a representative orders your flogging, it's like, it's, 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 it's it, it, it goes with impunity and it gets to go and check. Even the local police department will not even call the representative in. Imagine an ordinary citizen having an issue with a lawmaker. Basically, the accountability is not there. <clears throat> nobody gets to ask the lawmaker what happened because, again, he's, he's, he's a big gun, so nobody wants to get in hands with that. I think that is very troubling, and we must pay keen attention to uh, Marvin Mosley in Bond County. I think he probably thinks he's the deputy president in that part of the... Uh, of Liberia, he he's violently and brutally to citizens there. I think that's something that we must pay keen attention to. And uh, you already uh, said you dealt with this issue on Wednesday. I think it's becoming alarming. The issue of uh, the National Elections Commission telling us that uh, voter registration now, they want to go digital. It's, I don't know how far the government like bro went with uh, this whole national, you know, citizen ID card, you know, noise that they were beating around here, you know, because for government, for government to work, you know, every functionaries in government, you know, have to, you know, move together simultaneously to aid government, especially in terms of service delivery. You cannot come here now in 2023 when we have just six months to an election that you want to go full blast with a digital registration that people can go and, and, and register. We all know the, the, the ways in which the, the national election set up registration. Well, when people go to, you know, I mean, polling precincts to go and register, if their citizenship do come into question, you know, they, they got to go bring somebody from the community to verify that they are actually Liberian citizens. Now you're telling us where our people are basically looking for food to eat, that one can sit in the comfort of their living room in, in, in Putuken, or maybe in, in Barclayville and go and, re and, and log online and register. The Elections Commission must be serious, yeah. Like Bureau, we all know we're very challenged in terms of having a, a, a national registry where we can have people data and we can be able to manage those data. But to come now and tell us that you want to go to a digital uh, a registration, I think it's very troubling. And one may argue, I mean, this, 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 maybe we are forgotten. This flaw saying guy is still at the National Elections Commission. In fact, he's the he's, he's one of the deputy commissioners. He headed the 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 the, uh, 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 the data center. So these are things that we should be careful with. I don't know whether it is a it is a scheme, you know, engineered by this guy to manipulate votes at the Elections Commission. I think political parties should pay very keen attention to that. We want our country to you know go into the digital state, but it cannot be a premature one. You know, Stephen, a lot of our people, we, we even struggling with stable electricity, you know, let alone a stable electricity, uh, internet facility. Now you want to tell us that our people should go online to register. That is, that is mockery, man, Stephen. Thank you. So, so yeah, so the, 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 the photo registration will be biometrics. So biometrics will mean that they'll use um, digital fingerprints, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, what I, the online portal is for is to fast track your registration process. So once you you register online, you take your barcode, you scan it, then they'll be able to get pull of your data immediately. And for those who, who who have you know access to 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 internet and doing that. But so do they, they the yeah, go ahead. 
But do they even have your initial, you know, data to to mash up why you upload? That's my question. Yeah, 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 and that's the sad part. Like, bro, you're not running data against <laughs> any database. You know, you're yeah, not, it's not, not, not I mean, so if, 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 if you don't process. have no information, if you don't have no information right. about Stevie, I can put anything in there. How do you verify? That's it. That's the question. You know, you 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 can because uh, and, 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 and besides that, Stevie, besides that, Stevie. That's the same problem we have in Nigeria. People force a system. Right now, there will be a lot of fake things going on. They will be able to register all kinds of people and do things and justify. So, I mean, are we prepared for that? And and and, and the key to these to these elections in 2023 is is how robust we intend to be in terms of pool washing and, 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 and monitoring the whole pool washing is very very process. important. Very, 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 very important. Very, very, very important. Because um, unless you have a pool washer who is willing to connive or collude with uh, with other political parties, will you be denied some of your votes? Because if you work in a precinct and, 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 and the counting is done manually, we're not voting electronically, it's done manually, there's no way, unless your pool worker connive, that uh, that result that your pool worker will sign especially all those who come, the first top three who eventually sign the uh, final tally sheet will be the official result of that polling place. Anything to the contrary, uh, tell our people, make sure you have, if they have one million polling places across the country, make sure you have your one million polling places tally sheet officially signed by the National Elections Commission. Uh, manage the person in that, uh, the, the supervisor there and that tally sheet will determine the results. Steven, Any, I don't know what... I don't know whether you want to give me one minute. There's this thing, man, on my mind that I wanted to speak to, to our librarian people, please, in my sure. issues. If You know, for a lot of us who are young people and paying key attention to social media, particularly the Instagram, the vice president of our country is becoming an embarrassment on Instagram. A lot of you, I don't know, probably Stephen Johnson, I see some of your comments on the VP post. This is a woman who, when she's ready to play Holy Jesus, you will wonder how she's playing Holy Jesus. This is a same woman who, she, this vice president is more of an Instagram model. She posts pictures every day. Every day you go on Drew Howard Taylor page, she, she's enjoying, she's taking trips, she's taking vacation, the, 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 the lavish trips. The last time she posted, I even sent you in your inbox, Stephen, thanking us for, for having her for 40 k and, and followers on, on, on Instagram. Well, when there are lots of issues in the country, women and girls being raped, you have a vice president who was elected basically on the on the on the on the sentiments of this gender balance and you know wanted to have a woman a woman closer to the president who would be an I, you know, to be flagging, you know, gender issues in the country. But uh, apparently Vice President Taylor is, is okay once she's getting, you know, the, the, the perks that come to the office, she gets to take her trips. In, in Latin America, she gets to go to the to the to the islands, to the Caribbean, you know, and, and her people cheer on and sing Kumbaya. That is okay. Look, Stephen, I'm not saying that she, she's not supposed to be on Instagram, but every day this if, if I I'm no, I, I don't, she, she, I don't she, she's she's less when Vice President uh, 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 and Howard Taylor does her makeup, you know she posts pictures there. I said it, you know, but you read my comment on her. She gave us regular updates. So you know, national leaders must must conduct themselves in ways, especially you are vice president of a poor country somewhere there in Africa, and you and you and, and your and your and your content that you put up on Instagram it shows that you you are more of a first leader of a country, and, and all you do is your medicue and pedicure, and you are okay. Then one one tend to ask critical questions, Stephen. Take it off mm -hmm. of and uh, having for the care view. If, if at some point in, in the program, if you can you, you can post the the tag I send you in your in your in your inbox. I think our people need to see because not the typical librarian will have access to Instagram to go and see how the leaders are conducting themselves. It's very it's very embarrassing, Stephen. When lots of young sisters in the country have been raped, babies have been you know left and past extracted. You don't hear this vice president, and she said that she will not be an old car part, but won't even ask him what a, is she even a car. Ready, and let alone raw water. So I think we should pay key attention to Vice President and Taylor 
who was behaving more of the first leader of the country than a vice president. I mean, she, she, the, her page is more of porn and pageantry. She, you know, show how she's taking trips and everything is okay with her. Like her days when she was with, you know, former President Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. But you, you know, I like, you know, that's why Joe Hattie, I never stood for anything our whole life. She never stood for anything. It's, it's always been about herself, her, her, her own personal livelihood. She's never stood for any cause. Whether it was in the 1970s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and even now, she's never stood for anything. When last year, Drew Howard Taylor fighting for, for women's rights, fighting for girls' rights, fighting for, for the mistreatment of people in society, pushing bills at the legislature that will, that will enhance maybe, let's say, the healthcare sector or the look at our our um, vulnerable population, the older folks and other people. You don't see Joa taking those courses, even as first lady. Well, the course she took, zero. Joa was first lady when Taylor was, was um, the forces were causing chaos in the country. Did he hear her speak? Zero. She, she, she's never been in the interest of the library. She, she only managed to ride on, 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 the Taylor, on the Taylor name. She only managed to ride on the, Taylor, on the Taylor's name and 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 then use it for political for political gains. Other than that, Joe Howard Taylor is is a flop. She she's never stood for any cause. She 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 has always been there for herself. But let me come to you, Jerry. Um, what's trending from your end? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one of the issues, maybe you guys might have talked about it, uh, is this uh pension law from the uh that was passed by the liberian senate jerry what going on with you you're not well also why well, huh? i'm okay you're yeah, not getting you, me yeah the way you carry on from the best and then talking to somebody who got critical cool you can't even sound better so i'm concerned i mean you want to be sure it's warming up to gain his element yeah i just want to be sure that your camera is okay no, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yes, okay, guys, I'll walk out. You know, maybe you're you okay, so, uh, very concerned. And it's very you know, early. Right? Right? You, you know, oh, it's already. very early. Yeah, I think I had some money for Vuzela. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, already. <laughs> no, no, already, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Uh, when it's, I say it's injury, I'm not going to rush in the war from it. Yeah, it's very early here. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, what I'm concerned about is that that pension law, you see, when I saw members of the Liberian Senate, you know, I've been mean, very consistent about this thing after every week when they came into committee room, you know, I come back. What are they concerned about? Because even the initial bill that we were talking about, that they say they were on money, is the same thing they agree with from the House of Representatives, the current one, that talk about you know, receiving 50% of your of your current or last salary that you will take prior to the time you retire. And you know, why are these people so insensitive to the plights of the Liberian people? Because you were elected to perform certain functions. I mean, to make sure, provide for the security of the states and so many things. Our revenue envelope is already like over kilo, you know, on basic salary and stuff. How many investments, how many things, how are they impacted the life of our people? You are telling us that until you die, we should be able to give you salary and make sure I give you uh, security. Why are the people who elected you are sitting there? Government say free and compulsory primary education. But if you look around, how many public schools you see, even see in Montevideo? Most of the that holds most of the population. You don't find many schools. I work at the MCSS. Many at times you see politicians taking phone to call. Meanwhile, the education law says you should be able to have 40 in a classroom, but somebody will call and say you'll put a jury in school. But then you want quality. All these things are there with budgetary constraints. But you get members of the Senate or the legislature happy to an ad law, add more money to themselves, give themselves security after they already receive enough money. And also, I think it's troubling. I think members of the House of Representatives should look at that. And they should not be encouraged. We can't continue. Even those of our people that are pensioned, the old people, how many times they get their money? 
It's very difficult. The civil servant that served this country that worked, the people that elected them. And you know, so Stevie, I mean, actually that's why I'm concerned about because economically it's not wise. And I think it will continue to create problem if uh, we want to really make progress as a country. We should not be focusing that the legislature by her own pension scheme. That when you come from the legislature, you can be able to look at it. There are a lot of insurance company I mean, across the country. Instead of bringing additional burden on the government, I think it's not economically wise. That's my training issue for now. The other issue about yeah. UL. Before, before, I, before, I go to, 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 before I go to Pierre on his training issue, let me, let me speak to the that stuff briefly. And I think the last time we, we, we had that conversation on this show, yeah, we, and I think Pierre was, Pierre, yeah, Pierre and I was on it, um, Pierre and I were on it. We dealt sufficiently with that issues on grounds that uh, that pension benefit is, 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 is bogus. It's bogus. It's bogus because representatives or senators or lawmakers in general, they make decent salary. They make decent salary. A lawmaker who who goes to the legislature in 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 six years, in six years, if he's making about anywhere between eight to ten grand a month, in six years, that lawmaker has made way significant amount of money that he or she can contribute into a retirement savings to Nashville, for example. So if you're making $10,000, you can say my monthly contribution to my retirement scheme will be maybe $1,000. You put it in a retirement scheme. To think that you will make 10 grand a month for six years or nine years, and then after you are booted out by your people, and then you come back to the same community that that community people should, should the librarian people should sponsor you until you die. That nonsense will not work. Let me just tell you what will happen. Once you have a, a new government in, 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 in October, one of the first things that that government will have to ask these lawmakers is show us in the budget where do we find the money? Where do we find the money? Which budget law item should we cut? to find money to pay people who they say, according to them, quote unquote, using, they won't use the word honorably, honorably retired. Honorably mean retired to mean that you, you say, I no longer will, will contest, I will just go home and sit down. And then because you say that, then you honorably be retired, the country should to finance you until you die. Now come to us, since you lawmaker, you approve the budget, show us in the budget. How do we raise that money and which budget line items should we cut in order to fund it? You know, people just, you know, and 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 and, and, and every time we come here and talk about these things, a lot of people in our country don't take public service as a service. They take it more so as, as a place for wealth creation. And I tell people, if you want to look for wealth, your best bet is to start a business going to the private sector. When you come into public service, it's about service to your country. It's not about wealth creation. It's about how much contribution can you make in order to move the needle, to change the life of your children, your children's children, and the future of the many destituted children and Liberians across the landscape. That should be your passion. But where it becomes a place where you think that you can use your powers. Yeah. To, to, to add monies to, to, to create a livelihood just for you until, 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 until the end of your life, then it becomes it becomes a, a, a complete nonsense. And nobody will, listen, once you have a decent government in 2024, that nonsense mm -hmm. will not work. So let's not just waste our time on it. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll find a time and talk about it. Let me go to Pia. Um, Pia, what's trending from your end? Uh, somebody normally says when you come to church late, don't raise chorus because that chorus may have been sunk already before you arrive. And I say this to say I went to do some other obligation and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't follow what our main topic is. So 
the things I have are trending issue. I don't want to bring it up before I realize it's in. The so we're talking about the we're talking about we're talking about the early stuff, the uh, the suspension of the politics. Uh, we'll talk about President We are trip to the U.S. and the U.A.E. and then uh, um, that uh, letter from the government of Liberia to the to the Musu's family, the Gloria Scars family on the on the uh, on the death of Chalo. So we'll talk about those three issues. Okay, that's that's uh, that's fair enough. Except that I, you know, to talk about the UL situation as a topic, I thought it would have served us well when we, if we have some of the interest uh, from the university. Uh, if we, if we have made effort out with him, they say the producer. They on the ground, they don't help us to do anything. They yeah. could have reached out to since to the pro side. Because it's something that affects the university in generality, not just about so. You know, it would have been good if they could help us to have some of the comrades on uh, because they are the ones who have been affected by whatever the administration has announced. So it would have made the discussion substantive. Now we're standing with manage what we what we have. Um, so and, and, and my, my first training issue is good as Jerry is here. Jerry, I read I read something the other day that persecutors in Korea are seeking a nine-year prison term for the guys who were accused of rape. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you are right. Definitely. Because the, these are double crimes. The obstruction of justice and that of you know joint rape, that's the reason why. And it's part of their laws. Yeah. All right. So what that means is that the persecution process is already on and that what the persecutor... Okay, let me put it this way. Okay. Has the trial gone on? They've been declared uh, guilty, and it's, it's a question of because when prosecutors start asking for how long somebody can be sentenced, then it means the trial itself is over. The individuals are guilty, and they are discussing their sentencing. And therefore, the prosecution is saying, "What we want now that they are guilty is nine years imprisonment." Is that why it is? Yes, uh, actually, I think they, they have to make a final decision. They know, I think, they are guilty because the defend uh, lawyers did not make their case and the people are clear on their laws. So the only problem that they were negotiating for is you reduce the term. And you know, we know they are guilty for you reduce the term. The only the term basically the budget has not been released. Okay. Yes. The trial has been conducted, and from all of the legal requests, you can know the people that are defending them, they are saying, bigger oh, reduce the term. But the Korean government, through their lawyers, are saying, no, we can't do that. It's our law. Hmm. You know, I brought it up because I, I, I saw this stuff a couple of days ago. Uh, we haven't talked about it. I don't even see it being carried in the Liberian media. And in as much as these guys are, you know, government people, somebody was there. Well, I, I think Georgia was in OKFN News. I think yesterday or day yesterday. Yeah. OK, OKFN News. But I'm concerned about that because, like I've said before on the show, these fellows, they are Liberian citizens. Uh, Interesting that some of us know them personally. Irrespective of the different political styles we are on, we are all friends. And their situation is sad. You know, they've held them in, in confinement for some time. You know, nine year imprisonment for those fellows would mean a lot. They spend nine years in jail in a foreign land, in a place like Korea that is a kind of closed society. I'm worried what the, the state of mental affairs will be. And, and, and I mean, it's just sad. Put all the politics aside. 
they just saw, and, 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 and I'm concerned. It means that the government itself that said they were making legal representation on their behalf feel miserably. And that's where they are. Uh, the second thing is uh, I saw one newspaper giving an impression that Yega Koruba and Akaros Gray smoke peace, peace pipe. Were they having conflict? Akaros Gray provoked a conflict with the students of the university. If he's supposed to smoke peace pipe, that peace fight should be with the people he attacked. He and Koluba did not interface. He left the campus before Koluba went there. So there was nothing personally happening between the both of them. So the, the smoking peace point for wedding. And I was, I was a little bit confused when I saw that story because I think up to today, or today or yesterday, I listened to a Yaga Koluba say you having some kind of press conference. And dealing with people that hell, including the very great himself. So where, where, where did the peace point go when you were dealing with, with everybody, the job we are, the great, everybody, the, some of the things he said about great were so nasty. How do you smoke peace point with somebody and you tear them apart like that? And then my, my last issue, just before we go, look, Stephen, if we went for a party, all of you here, we went for a party, or one for a program, and you do everything at the program, the program is so sweet. Everybody looking for the entertainment. You bring the entertainment, you bring the food at the time, the salad already smelling, because you're not still on. At that time, the hunger, everybody's stomach gone. If you take keen note, many of the people who will eat at that place will leave half of the food in the plate and walk away. So food normally is meant to be eaten when it's hot. It's meant to be eaten when the people are hungry and all these things. And I'm saying this for a particular purpose. I'm getting sick of the fact that all the opposition actors, whether it's Cummings, whether it's Buaka, whether it's Tiawan Gongro, all these people appear to be finding it very difficult to tell us what their tickets are. And everybody appetite running away. Everybody interest dying. Leaders have to be decisive. If John Lima Pia wanted to be president, he would have decided that five years ago, not today. He must have, he must have been contemplating the quality of leadership he wants to provide to the people. Who are the options that are under consideration for him as to who his running mate will be? And therefore, when we reach to where we are now, it is not an unending process. The only ticket we know in this election is that we are in, enjoy our title ticket. No one ever, ever, ever since. Why is it difficult for the rest of the people? The anxiety you've created. And what people need to consider, Stephen, and, and the rest of you, there are different interests that are at play. So when you want to address the question of running me, all the kind of thing, you do it in time. So that if there is a backlash or an eventual fall off as a result of the decision you make, you got some time to mitigate. If you drag it forever and do it at the time, and the fruit of that process becomes explosive, and you don't have a time to fix it, then you will have, you would have squandered an opportunity. And I'm saying this because you see, opposition is our base, is our constituent. We don't care about Georgia. Our constituents in opposition. Because take for example, if we went to the election with all the differences we have had. If we went to the election, for example, if Mark Kennedy doesn't go through, the next candidate that in that in our race is the one I will support. So I must also have an interest in who that person is choosing, what's the quality of that person. I must also have interest in it because that will be my plan B, it will be my fallback position, it will not be the government side. And that's the reason why I'm concerned that all of them struggling and taking a snail pace 
in addressing this issue of running mate. Just a question. Thank you. And yeah, that's a that's a legitimate that's a legitimate concern. That's a very legitimate concern. And one of the things uh, in the U.S. here, President Biden was clear about was that his running mate who have been a lady and who have been an African American. He had narrowed down his search. And in fact, it was part of his campaign message that he would select a woman. And so when the when the elections, when they when they when he won the nomination, he had already developed a a TOR for the search committee. So he narrowed it down. So the search committee role was now to look among first to look for women candidates. So when they found women candidates, then they narrow it down. Yeah, what do you want to see in a lady candidate if we found if we found them? That's how you do. If I'm running for president of, of Liberia, for example, the first thing I would do is I would set up a search team, and the team will be charged with the responsibility of bringing to me three names. Three names. But mind you, that three names will still be based on what I call decision science. Because political decisions are not guesswork. This is not 1822 where people say that like, guess. Politics is science nowadays. So of that three names, I will ask my, my vetting committee to say, you know what, go out there, conduct a, a survey in the in the sixth populated county of who of, amongst the three persons can make a better vice president to me. And the committee come and bring. Now, among that three names, I see the signs, I see the name, and I make my choice. That's me. You know, I will, I will approach it in that way. It reduces the stress. It reduces all of your, all of the the different different forms of 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 of, uh, of um, intrusion and all of that thing. It gives you a better perspective about who will be a better candidate and who is out there that the librarian people or whosoever you're running. That's my formula. But I mean, you know, we'll find time next week to talk about this. We'll go into it deep. We'll look at. We'll look at candidate by candidate, look at potential running mates and, 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 and what is unfolding and the news that we're hearing out there. We're hearing a lot of news. We want to find time to talk about it in details. We'll plan a date next week um, and uh, and go into it deeper. Look at the candidates, what they bring, and look at all of these things. But thank you, Pierre, and that was a great um, observation. So, guys, let, let's move to our topic, um, our first topic. Uh, and and, and the, the, we've seen a pattern in our history about about our politics relative to the University of Liberia. Um, we saw in, in the 1980s, um, the, the move of be removed. Uh, 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 since, you, since you're kicking off with a real topic now, let me appeal to my students to share the show. I see you're doing great. I see 658 shares. So it's possible you can reach a, a, a 1K because you're already gone in the middle and we get we just going to start the crust, the meat of the discussion. So please share the show. That, that, you know, the way you share the show, that's how the, the participation of students and visitors can be enhanced. Um, like I always say, we don't, we don't reach our goal. We don't reach people that we want to reach if we don't share the show. Thank God the radio stations are doing great. The people is here, the people of Bond County following. D15 is there, people in Monsuara could be following Dupa. For them, they are the, the star of this whole show. You know, but we also take interest in the, the social media participants in addition to participants in addition to those who follow my radio. So let me beg you again. Share the show. Share more. You've done some. Share it, share it, share it. Like I have many people following. Because the things we are about to discuss. They are serious. If you follow the discussion, you know how serious they are because there are historical references to where we are. The lessons are clear as to where we are headed. So this goes that we all should be involved with. So share the show, please. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, thank you, Pia. So on this our topic about the, the ban on student politics. We've we've read through the page, pages of history. And, and and as somebody said, history does not repeat itself, it rhymes. We read through the pages of history that uh, in nineteen in the nineteen eighties, and we you know we we seen people who lay vivid accounts of those um, history when the remove or be removed incident took place at the university, where the then president Samuel Doe had sent armed men at the university's campus. People were beaten. People were raped. Women were raped. 
And some students die in the process. Yeah. Student politics was banned. And Samuel Doe thought he had won because to silence, to silence the student community, especially when you when you are when you are when you're a government that is essentially against the wishes of the people, you think you've won. Eventually, what happened? The Samuel Do, the Samuel Do hedge of money came to an end in a brutal fashion. Watch on TV how Do was meandered publicly. He was killed uh, publicly on TV by by um, the IMPF headed on headed by uh, now Senator of Nima County Prince George. So we watched that. Fast forward in the 1990s, the March 21st, 2001 incident where state security underpaid, ragtag, malicious dressed as state security, stormed the university campus. Students were flogged, arrested. Some of them were taken into detention. Um, they were tortured. Um, we got in information that a comrade had died. She was pregnant at the time. We, we, we read that. Um, some of our colleagues, including Pia and other, had to flee into exile on the strenuous means, stay on, on high sea for over 20 days in search of, uh, of a safe haven. Student politics was again banned at the university. Eventually, what happened? Uh, the Taylor government was was dethroned by rebel forces advancing in Monrovia from the Bushwell Island terrain and the and the and the Basel Bell coming from from the Buchanan Basel Rabbit Feet area. Taylor was forced to flee the country. He went into exile in Calabar. Was later arrested while trying to flee Calabar. Was sent to to Liberia in handcuff was turned over to the RCC. Today, he languages in a British cell for, for, for in jail for over 50 years. So the history is clear that those who thought that they've won by silencing the student community actually lost. And so we woke up yesterday to news that even after clear provocation by the Carlos Gray to go on the university campus, disrupt classes, the university authorities saw that it was necessary in the words of the president, to ban student politics, to suspend student politics on ground that student politics has been a source of violence, a source of confusion, and a source of disruption on campus. In his, in his words, he thought that the ban will bring sanctity to the university and that violating the rights of people, especially university students, the right to free speech the right to freedom of expression under our laws will be a solution. Pia, I will start with you on this because you, you bring to this conversation a wealth of history, not only as a, as a former student leader yourself, but as somebody who actually lived these histories. How do, you, how do you think such a decision one would be received by the student community? Two, do you think that such violation will take effect, and three, what will be the the next step of action of these of the university students? The student community has a very unique history, uh, particularly the Vanguard Student Education Party. And it does not matter, in my opinion, of the era of these happenings, whether there were actions taken in the 80s, actions taken in the 70s before soup was given birth to, actions taken in the 90s, in the 2000s, there is this consistency factor in the principles that the students stand for. So the struggle has always been built around a set of principles. Those principles have never changed. It is because those principles have never changed, that's why the struggle of the student community, especially the struggle from the perspective of the Vanguard Student Education Party has been consistent, very constant. Before the Student Education Party was established, the country just, 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 just had a name that there existed something called democracy. But in reality, nothing of such existed because the democracy 
that is guarded and held onto by one party, and that could tree a democratization process that just portrayed one party state was not democracy. It is that plus the other excesses and abuses that the student community sought to challenge, hence the birth of the Student Education Party. They remained a force of resistance, even far better than some of the national actors that were challenging the status Cool. You can think about the Moja. Uh, you can think about the power. Eventually, political parties like the LPP, the UPP, the Loop, the Brown Unification Party. You know, as long as these political parties existed to try to push this whole concept of multiplicity of political party in a pluralistic democracy. The student community that was not involved in the national political effort as to who leads was strong, very active and engaging in making sure that there was always social justice, academic freedom, and peace. Under their concept of social justice, democracy was an unbending element. So whenever people attempted to crush and crumble democracy, no matter the consequence, there was always a resolve to resist. There, then, and now. So if you ask me the question, what will happen? What will happen will not be different from what happened in the past. When the group of university students were sent to Bela Yala, and Samuel Doe passed the decree to have them executed. You guys were not around, but any of you here know why they were sent to Bethlehem? Any know, of you know? The main Zika Zika Zika. Zika. Come again? I think it means Zika Paju with them? Yeah, Zika Paju were allowing the rest of the people who went to Bethlehem. So again, if my memory serves me well, the military dictatorship bans student politics. Unlike the democratic arrangement you had, when the military regime took a decision, they believed it was caged in, in, a, in, a, in an iron stone and no one in society dared challenge it. These men were the one who said they would challenge it. They said they would challenge it. And the military regime was furious that a group of people called students who were supposed to be learning both and reading science and all kinds of things took on to challenge their powers. If the rest of them have some kangaroo trial or something, sentence them to Belayara, some of do announce that they will be executed for challenging the orders of the PRC. The point I'm trying to make is that those students at that time, they knew the consequences of challenging the military order. That did not deter them. They challenged it and were willing to live by the consequence, which do announce was the execution of these student leaders. That didn't scare them. Pressure from all over, including pressure from the very student community. There were students who were not in Manipur jail, who were still challenging that, 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 that action by the military government. Then the military government realized that, oh, so what it means that even if we execute these people, we have not killed that struggle because more and more will come. What will we continue to do? We keep executing them. It doesn't work like that. Eventually, the guys were free. You remember the famous move or be removed. They had this situation with Amos Sawyer. The student challenged it. And in the midst of that challenge, the better government decided that they should, they should remove the student from the campus. The student would move by themselves or it would be removed. The rest of history, we all know. March 21st, like we said, I was an actor, I was a player, I was in it. We all know what happened. And eventually, some of us ended up in exile. There have been several instances of invasion of the university since then. But one thing that you will not do 
and subvert it. It's that desire to ban student quality, that democratic right of the student. You can, it doesn't make sense. You can live in a democratic society. October, you are going to go to election. So you live in a democratic society where you ban student quality on campus, the campus that is the macrocosm of the larger society that mirrors everything that happens in a larger society. If you ban student quality on a university campus, because it mirrors the, the larger society, you see the larger society itself does not need politics. That's just common sense. And strangely enough, this we don't now, but a government that is comprised of many former student leaders, including people from the very students, scene, all, all the parties that are interacting on campus, there are people who are involved with the current government. So to answer your question succinctly and allow the other brother to have their stay, is that it's not going to land on silver plateau. No, it's going to be resisted. In fact, today I saw some action around the Fender area, I mean area, where the students have blocked the main road leading to in and of Monrovia. They put tires on the road, blazing the fire. They started. You can even go there and shoot people. They're not going to give up. They're not going to fall short of being martyrs like other people who went before them. But that democratic right, they would not, they're not prepared to compromise it at any instance. No, they're not prepared. So the government is playing with fire. The government has refused to learn from history. The government is repeating the errors of past regime. But what the government needs to know in the midst of all of these things, which Stephen mentioned, is that there's always an end of those who choose to engage the student community in a fight. Sometimes it looks like it's taking long. In the end, there'll be consequence. The student community will win. Those leaders will find themselves pants down. There's a trouble from himself being, being overthrown. Just how dude saw himself being overcome as a result of the war. Just how Taylor saw himself being chased out, kept in Calabar, released, his grace brought to Monrovia in Hengam, taken to the hill for 50 years. Those consequences await any leader who followed the full step of these people who did all those evil things. And if there are leaders today who are not following the history and reflecting on the occurrences of the past, they will fall into those very pits. My initial comments. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. And darling, I read uh, I read most of your posts on Facebook uh, regarding this um, incident, um, and I could tell right then. Then you're very angry about it. Uh, um, so you uh, make saying some strong words against the administration of the university. As a as a former as a former student leader yourself, you know, being active in student politics, do you think this ban is just a mad joke or empty bluff by by the administration, or do you think this is something that the student community will cave into. Steven, you know, like Big Brother Pia said, I think the president of the university is not is no stranger to the University of Liberia. Zaolo Nelson understands how throughout history, the students themselves have always built resistant army against administration who would try to, you know, to, to go after them from exercising their, their right to speech, to mobilizing their people, and strengthening their base. But you see, sometimes when people get consumed into this, into this idea of wanting a government job, Stephen, then they tend to take instruction from the executive. Zaolo Nelson knows that these university students will not go down. They, they're not going to throw roses at the feet, you know, of the system. Stephen, just yesterday, I remember when, when Chairman Bennett Wellen was Chairman of Soup, where Madam Salif was prevented from entering the university of Palabaud. The CDC made a, a story of the front page of the headline. They clapped for him, Kumbaya. That was the Vanga Party then. It is still the Vanga Party today. So to, and I was privileged to sit with, uh, with old man Alaric Tokba, and he said something to me. He said, even on firing squad in Bella Yala, there was family pressure from other people to say, some of those have announced that you guys should just come and apologize that you are not planning to incite people and you will not be executed. And Alaric father told the person that went to him, he said, talk to your son. He said, that man that I know, he will not agree. So these comrades, 
whether it was, you know, Alaric Togba, Ezekiel Fajimo, you know, they were resolved to build a resistant army against the ban of student politics. Here you are, you have a president who has a very short side understanding of history. You come, you say you want to ban student politics. And, and these are university authorities who are teaching administration, who are teaching governance, who are teaching politics. You say there was violence on the university campus. Had the university conducted or commissioned a full-scale investigation to find out what went wrong, what happened, what can be the lessons learned in the, in the future so that, you know, even when you lift the bound student politics so that the students themselves will not, you know, divert into that same issue. But the answer is very simple, Stephen. The university knows the main corporate of the violence on campus. They are yet to, they are yet to talk to a representative of Carol's grade they are yet to, the university should be gathering their lawyers to probably take a civil action against Representative Gray for invading the university campus. So you think because you graduate from LU, so the day you were on campus, they were having an alumni association program that, 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 that weren't your presence on campus? That's has always been the party. So the more the regime tried to be more thorough, you know, to show their iron fist, mobilize the gallantry of the young men in the student unification party and there is no street there is there is not strange to the party you know it's no strange to the party i mean whether it was doe whether it was taylor the party have always triumphed if i why it does it rejuvenate the comrades and what you saw today at the fender belt you will see more of those kinds of spontaneous happening in the country you are going to election you think when you ban student politics it will ease all the political tension because let's be honest here, Stephen. The government have done an analysis that the only young people in the country that are forceful engaging the government every day on the hour is the young comrades in the student unification party. The, the student unification party have transformed into the, the young comrade brigade that, they, that this regime see as opposing everything that they bring to the table. So the idea in the strategy is to ban student politics, force out of Nelson hands to issue this this stupid ban and to see how you can you can you can stop students from airing their view and threaten them that you know if they mobilize and they assemble what kind of nonsense is that in the 21st century you're telling students that they don't have the right to assemble that pol student political activity they shouldn't even meet come on man Zaolo Nelson you know how these things work don't, don't yeah you threaten university students who are reading government and politics so a lot of the universities, if you want to ban student politics, I think you should probably open your own private school and decide not to even offer political science. Because even in private universities, you'll find out one morning one president will wake up from a bed when a student, you know, got issues and questioning where their student activity fees, you know, are going. You know, they, they will get vexed and they will lack, you know, sometimes they will just issue the, the, the ban and say, from the day on, no, no more student politics. So these are affordances that we see, Stephen. So the government have done an analysis that the Student Unification Party continue to engage them. And mind you, Stephen, and, 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 and Big Brother Pia, you know the party is about to go to Congress. It is a calculated attempt by the government. They know the Vanga Party is about to usher in a next batch of, or, or a next setting of Politburo and Senate Committee members. So that is trying. So the government is trying to prevent that ahead of 2023 where you to have a more you know rejuvenated party you know a new leadership that will be firebrand and robust so the idea is to crush that idea so that is what is happening so i mean you see why you saw on fender tv i think the comments are just warming up one thing we want to say to our people the university students will continue to do these kinds of things to send signal they are not burning down the school they are setting roadblocks and exercising their disenchantment with the with the authorities of the university. You see more of these kinds of activities. So I want to call on the university authority to look at this. If you want to ban student politics, show us the report. What happened? Who provoked the violence? Investigate the facts. And then you tell us what happened. But there's not Zaolo Nelson private school that he wakes up one morning and 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 and, and, and issue a stupid ban. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jerry. I, I want you to 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 um to look at it in the context of um 
of you know the same question I asked uh, Darlington in terms of what would what would be the response. And 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 and, and, and when I when I when I ask this question, I, I have in mind the um the the, the, your, the constitution of our country talks about freedom of expression, freedom of uh, of uh, of speech. So it's 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 the ban on student politics saying that no students should talk politics on, on, on the university campus. Wouldn't that be absurd? Absurd you don't have to, to Stephen. Stephen yeah. Wouldn't that be absurd to think that I will go to the university campus and and, and we can't talk politics? We can't we can't participate in any political activity. We can't form. You know, groupings and stuff. Does anything think that's complete absurdity? Uh, I think uh, the government is either politically stupid, and and let me say this before I answer the question. You know, uh, in their book reinventing government, uh, Ted Gabla and Mason documented that uh, if you cannot demonstrate results, you cannot get public support. You cannot get public support. And that if you cannot uh, distinguish success from failure, you can't correct it. Uh, so the government, like veteran PR indicated, I mean, maybe uh, they are not reading history. So they are not correcting the wrong. How come George Weir that is bragging or a riot, which I know is inflicting a role in resolving the Liberian civil conflict, who said you are going from one warren faction to another talking to people preaching peace? Cannot say to a university students. Cannot say it. But he decided to use the president to say you are going to ban these people. And the government should understand you cannot. It's not possible. Not in this democratic Liberia. No. You can't do that. The students are raising general issues. And we are a democratic country. You can come and reintroduce, uh, you know, dictatorship, cracking down institution. They have managed the quiet down Linsu. The quiet down Linsu. So all of these things, you will not hear Linsu, and, you know, or fly to some extent speaking because they've been controlled by Jeff Koji. And, you know, so, I mean, uh, like your question, it will be strongly resisted. You saw today, like, uh, Virgin Pia earlier indicated, the students were blocking, uh, they blocked the road today, burning tires and all of that. That's just the beginning. That's, th that, that's just the beginning. These are some of the things that some of the senators were saying, that we must be able to, as well as Jeremiah Kuhn. He said, this peace we are enjoying, if we do not preserve it by our actions, there will be a bigger trouble that we ourselves will not be able to sit here and be talking policy issues. And you know, also, the repercussion for said action is actually severe because you will not restrict students. You can't do that. President, we should know that this is not uh, his family. Yeah, his family. this is the Republic of Liberia. You can't go and, 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 and embarrass the, the students, make sure that you try to crack on them. No. You can buy student policy. What some of the students are saying, okay, since you say we should not do politics, close the political science department at the University of Liberia. Close the political science department. We are maybe it's not realizing that some of the people that took these actions, the way they end up. And like I posted on my page, uh, I mean, you ban student policy, <laughs> the, 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 the ending will be extremely painful. We are should know that. We are should know that. You can ban any resistance, it will be very strong. The students are mobilizing. I spoke to some of the Congress who are members of SU. The men are having several meetings, and I mean, you can't do that. How can the uh, Zaro Nelson deny Vazi people? And two and then they wrote a piece of shit and brought it to him. He said, My man, you gotta read it. Thing. That's the next action. I think it's is 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 troubling. Uh and Many of our uh, political leaders and other people have spoken to some of these things, but I think it is important because when some of these people like PR and other people are being affected, there were men and women from both, from all of the sectors that were speaking. 
We need more pressure. And the students will not accept this. You know that, Stevie. You from the Vanguard Student Unification Party, you know the kind of spirit. And you know, if I attended the Universal Library, I would be a member of the party. And you know, so by, by, by activities, you know, I'm an affiliate member of the party. You know, because of the stance, the quest for social transformation is very, you know, like interesting. And all of those that follow soup, I mean, that participate in super activity, they follow the activities. They stay consistent on some of their critical stands. So you can go on campus, invading university campuses and other places. You can do that. If you're not trying to improve the departments and other places, make intervention at the university. The students have some legitimate concerns. They have situations besides that these are beauty of democracy. I was end of the law said as I conclude that booing and cheering, you know, are clear expression of displeasure and pleasure. Yeah, they, are elements, they are elements of the democracy. Of course. So if people praise you today, and then tomorrow they say, no, what we expected from you is not correct, they can boo at you. Why are you afraid? Is it because you want to like demonstrate like what other people said, the power or what? No, there is one decision. If, if the government had some level of serious matter in you know, your thinking, they shouldn't have even come near that position because it was, especially we're going to elections. You don't want to create a kind of clamorous you know, environment because you want to make the campaign noisy. I mean, the students will make it noisy, librarians will make it noisy. So it, it will be strongly resisted. Uh, these are my initial comments. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry made me to think about AMK, Amara Connor. He always said consistently that the one, one major regret he had is the fact that he did not attend the University of Liberia. Imagine this is a brother who was educated, went to some of the best schools, including Harvard, but he had a regret that he did not attend it. Look, the, 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 the University of Liberia is, for, for, you, for those of you who are Christian, let me put it in a Christian, it's a portal house. The portal coming to fix you, to make you whole again. You can be why you're not. You enter that place, you are molded, the portal will put you back together. And you'll be, look, I'll give you an example, Jerry. John Lima P.I. went to the university. He got no inclination of all the political things that he's so noted for. He read the science, the applied science of agronomy at the University of Liberia. He left the university as basically a scientist, an applied scientist. He became a communication guru. If you ask me where well, I learned everything that I applied in communication that made me to be a deputy spokesperson for a government, a deputy minister, that made me to be an acting minister of information, that made me to be a press secretary, I learned that from the belly. Orientation, the tutorship of the walls of the university generally, but specifically for the student education party. That's why he does. You have all the big, big communication czars and gurus all around the place. Some of them could be a better press secretary than that. You basically have a scientist fitting into that very slippery and sometimes very nasty field dealing with all the media issues. That's soup. Stephen Johnson then, basically a financial guy. But can you take the politics away from him? Where do you think you get it from? Where do you get it from? That's it. And just, just before Stephen come back in, I just want people to think about this. The March 21st that Stephen Johnson talked about, you know who was the president of the University of Liberia? Ben Roberts. Dr. Ben Roberts. You know what happened to Ben Roberts after he allowed three of them to use him, they brought 80, they brought everybody. You know what happened to him before he left this earth? He went blind. You're completely blind, disabled, suffering, live very miserable life, 
before God. Even the man who came to police on campus, and oh, yeah, I was coming to A. While he was the president, the man who took the police was Paul Morba. Everybody saw what Paul Morba went through before he left this earth. Then there are bosses who sent them. Taylor who sent them 15 years in jail. Dota who sent the army. Grab a Prince Johnson. Flop to him like some people. If I the first man to even get the same man he sent him. Who's that? No, I mean, don't even arrest the same man he sent him later on in the administration. Uh, yeah, Allison. Allison. Oh, Allison, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so they grab him and, and, and slaughter him like a piece of animal. Toba, uh, all the engagement with these people was executed right in his bedroom in the executive mansion. There are consequences to these things people do and people use them. And I said that to remind Reverend Dr. Sawolo Nelson, a devout United Methodist. Concerned with rescuing the perishing, caring for the dying. Those philosophies of the United Met of every United Methodist have been compromised. He's presiding over the university talks are going and beating people, and those who carry those talks are going free. And this man is supposed to be a reverend. This is a man who contested many times, wanting to be the bishop of the United Methodist Church. Do yeah, cross yeah. many times in his in his in his quest to be the bishop. Until do I mean until we are this is a bit of a travel consideration. Come on, they tell him. So he's doing the bidding. He got no independence. Everything he's doing, when we are then said do data what he does. This man could not even question the fact. About what we are, I mean, about what Gray did. That man didn't even have the belly to say, let me engage Gray and make him to stay away to not come on the campus. Nobody could talk to Gray. And one Gray ignited the chaos, what Saul Nelson and others are doing, punishing the people who did not instigate the violence. If I would not brought about our current Gray, how, how, how is it harmful to Gray that he bound student politics? It's helpful to Gray because Gray and his people, they can't stand the pressure coming from Sue. They can't stand the heat from the bearer of Sue. So when you say you ban student politics, they're about trying to keep Sue quiet. It benefits Gray. So Gray is being rewarded for carrying acts of torture on the university campus and, and, and having people to, to pass through what they pass through. Who is Ben? Then who is Saulo Nelson? Is he applying the principles of the Bible that he's supposed to know to a fingertip as a Reverend Doctor? Or he has compromised his godly principle just to sing Kumbaya to President We are. Those are sad situations. But then you remember, there are youths like him. He turned to a red before he died. Or Morba, who executed, who took the police and beat us and the all kind of thing, became a vegetable before he died. Exactly, and 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 I still have the scalp on my on my hand here for 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 my for my story first uh, incident at the university, uh, but those were you know as Pia uh, said, um, the university is is a refinery. You you yeah. enter the university, and you basically come from high school, young, energetic, looking forward to acquiring your. Your degree and just to you know come in the larger society and and contribute yeah. and, 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 and 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 Stephen and Stephen uh, we are we are is not a leader. You see, I saw something when uh, students from the MCSA were demonstrating; they were all on the road. President said he was in an official motorcade going to work around the foreign ministry. The president got down from the place. security said, "Oh, you got to do this." He said, "No, these are our children." These are our children. Let's find out what's happening. Let's show them that their teachers will go back to classroom. Many a times, veterans, some products of us who and the student unification party who were in government, they ran into some of the negotiations. They ran into them. But today, for we are, they just say, but man, anything that hey, oh, you just make sure we won't protect power. That is wrong. Use the quote unquote negotiation scale you say you are. 
and you brought and you know we and you ended like Brazil war war. Are you killing me? You know, so I mean, there's no there's lack of leadership here. I mean, okay. So, so, know, so as I was saying, let me let me let me conclude, Daniel. Before I, before I lose my thoughts, okay. um, as I was saying, the 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 university, as we know, is a refinery. When we 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 entered the university very young. I entered the university very young. I I I was fortunate to leave high school at uh, sixteen. Uh, by 17, I was in the university. And so we were very young, very young, um, very young men and women uh, entered the university uh, at a young age. Uh, it was looking all like fun. I remember when we used to go to social science classes, we see, you know, older people there. It was, it was fun. So me, Ali, uh, people like Swen, they play Delhi Shubayo, uh, Sheikh Dukli, and many of us, young uh, Mohamed Dukle, uh, Patrick Mbayo, all of us young, uh, young men with uh, enthusiasm, fire in the belly, wanting to acquire education to come in the larger society and contribute. But then we encounter political life on campus and it changed our life for the best. Um, it was my involvement in politics. It was my involvement in politics that, that had me to interact with, with, with presidents with precedence, nothing else. My involvement in politics had me, gave me the opportunity to interact with precedence. In fact, sitting on the table with, with precedence and, 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 and they asking you for your opinion on matters of the state and you have the, 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 the mental capacity to be able to analyze situation and have president look at you and say, yeah, you, you know, and, 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 and a lot of times, all of these things were happening at the time. We did not even have access to internet. We listened to BBC radio and VOA religiously, everyone or how or small radio, because when PRM left, when we took over as student leader of the university, the, the university student community to look up to the leaders for information. Now you have a fiduciary responsibility to go home. You can get, you can get internet. You gotta go listen to BBC. You gotta go listen to VOA. You gotta go listen to Radio Toji Vela. Because by the time you come on campus the next day, you're debating the issue. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta discuss the issue from a nuanced perspective. You know, you can be gay student, tell every day same story. When you when you discuss the issue, you gotta provide some facts uh, in Tanzania, for example. Giving you know the kind of classic example. In, 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 in Rwanda, you know, you because you're not listening to BBC, and that's why uh, I was excited the other day when uh, Ben Dosi Malo and I were chatting. This is a guy who I will, I will listen to BBC every now and then to hear him speak. Ben Dosi Malo, you know, we're chatting the other day, and I was telling him that Ben, I, I, I was one of your fans, follow you closely. People like Hassan Aronin, Farah Mungazi, you know. Uh, Ted Pickerton, Chris Pickerton, all these Robin Way, all these people, we we follow them. So the university prepared us. So by the time we left the walls of the university, we were already prepared for national leadership. When I went to work with USAID um, as a young man, uh, me and uh, Medina, we said sat on the same in the same office. Can you imagine? Um, sat in the same office, we're changing the course of our country through the non-governmental organization means providing support to come to rural community. Those were all leadership trips that we learned at the university. Yeah, I see Gary McCoy say, at that time, you were then skinning Stephen, aka political season. <laughs> yeah, it was skinning and uh, we play our part. We we led we led riots, we led protests. Um, had president, convoy seized. Uh, did a lot of crazy things and, and then we formed, yeah, Akapo Johnson, that's what, when we, we formed the, uh, in 2005, we formed the Youth for Ellen Presidency to to support Ellen Gafuan. Augustine Gafuan was the chairman. I was the vice chair to Gafuan, uh, Mohamed Ali, secretary general. And we, we formed the organization right at the cafeteria, at the central bank, to Gafuan office. We'll go there uh, and we plan it. When we launch on campus, the, you know, that program, President Salif King, she cried. She cried. She had just come to the country from Libya and, and drove to the campus. And when she saw the crowd, she couldn't believe it without even giving anybody a dime. We mobilized our own resources. And But I just said this to say that the university is, as Pia said, is a porterhouse. It's a refinery. It builds 
your leadership capacity? How did some of us become deputy campaign spokesperson for Joseph Boaka? You know, we 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 we, we play our part. We're, we're actively involved in President Salif campaign. You know, going to Lee Walk County. I was I was in Nimba. I was in Grand Chile. All of those places during 2005. But I mean, you know, the university have always been this place for for building leaders. And so part of that refinery is the politics. You can't take that away from the university. Yeah, darling. So the university presents a struggle to every generation. Where Frank Fanon would say, out of security, every generation have a mission, fulfill it or betrayed. So the young comrades who are there now, they don't want to transition the university with a history of not confronting tyranny. Because tomorrow, when they leave the walls of the university, critical questions will be asked. <laughs> you are secretary general of the party. You are chairman of SUB. You are member of the central committee. What happened when Mr. We are banned student politics using the, the hands of Zaolo Nelson? And it is very, very sad. And I can't even get my head around it that in the 21st century, university authorities were engaged in dictatorial tendency that are anti-democratic. You say they were violent on campus. Then you constitute an investigative committee to facts find what happened. The first thing you move, you suspend out the young comrade from, from school for time indefinite. A Carlos Gray visited the campus. In fact, I said it here the Friday before, Stephen, if you, if you remember. I said, Gray and Representative Dixon Sibu, they are beating violent drums that they were visiting the university campus and the police department had not even called them in for questioning or the university authority even issuing a statement to say, please, that is our university campus. If you have issue, meet with the with the with the with the with the board of trustees of the university and engage with us, please. Zaolo Nelson kept quiet in his partisan garment and he didn't do anything about that. It was well publicized, it was it wasn't spontaneous. Great announced that he would be on campus. If I offer issue a release that the student center and other places was going to be closed, and mess the whole issue about lunch, he visited the campus. So the university didn't constitute any investigation. Yeah, you are. You want to suffer commerce from practicing students. And I see people with, 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 with ready steam. Oh, and but they going to school. They just want to go to school. But why they can't leave the politics and they can't leave the palabra? No. The university. A lot of what you learn at the university is not just with classroom academic discipline. Like Stephen and Pia said, yeah, you learn a lot just from the pavement, just from your comrades, just from, you know, working in party structure, party leadership. You get to get properly groomed and orientated. Now, when you go to Tanzania, South Africa, and other places on the continent of Africa, you can compete with your contemporaries. When you're talking about the issue in Russia, you you, you have a, you have an idea. You can talk about you know war politics. You have a stake. You cross pollinate ideas at the university. It's the macrocosm, if you may, of the larger society. So the, and that is why student politics is very important. And Pierre yeah. said something. He said all these university presidents that authorities have managed and engineered them to come down and issue iron fist on student politics. See how they end up. And the militants in soup. And you still you know this. They say the gods of Odugudu. When you hear a comrade in the party say the gods of Odugudu, it is the gods of the masses. The god that, that both people children want to go to sleep and pray. University students better have food to eat. They go to 404, they manage, they mingle food, they share. So if struggling university students will be chased out and brutalized by, by, by security forces, sometimes malnourished, and planned and organized by corrupt public officials, the gods of the masses have a way of showing those people on the day of reckoning. So Zaolo Nelson, be careful. I know they say thing about job, but come on now. You, you're reverend first in the Methodist church. What is your moral voice of reasoning? What, what is the dictates of your training in, in, in the Bible you believe in? Or you suck up to a man like George Weah who want you to take instructions from him? Come on, Stephen. <laughs> That's a good one. So, guys, let's let move to the next conversation. And 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 we have two to go. We just um I so think I think I think you Paul being a student. This one is yeah, a, I want yeah, let me hear for him. Let hear for him yeah. for him. Well, a student, let hear what he thinks. Yeah. So uh from what actually happened, 
But what I can say to this is, this is an infringement on the other right because the Constitution is so declared that we have the right to assemble. And students coming together to actually put into practice what they have acquired because the university is actually teaching political science. And then students coming together to actually practice what they have actually acquired over the years and just to realize that the administration is uh, banning that activity or banning that, uh, that they are coming together is, is actually wrong. Let's take, for example, Bone County here, because the people said uh, the student never had the right to actually come together. Let's take, for example, Bone County here. There is a high school uh, called Quartiton Campus School, where the students never had uh, the, the, the proper instructors to actually teach them and were going to, to actually do uh, the national exam. The students came out, uh, headed by the student council president at that time. The student came out and they placed still resistance on all academic activities that day, stating that uh, the, 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 the school administrator should actually put into place in making sure that, uh, put McKinnis in place in making sure that uh, their demands are met. And so, uh, that's the same thing with the University of Liberia students. So they're coming together and then to, to, to actually exercise their, their right. And then you just banning them. I feel it's wrong. And like someone says, it's anti democratic and it doesn't actually uh, go in line with the Liberian constitution. And therefore, uh, that, that entire stuff will have been abolished because uh, Representative Great made the pronouncement soon, I mean, about two, three days prior to his going on the campus. And I strongly believe that the, 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 the Liberian National Police who actually call that, that representative in and, and actually question or call on that very administration that uh, they are actually pulling by the nose to say uh, student politics has been banned on campus to see oh, for today, that all education activities will come to a standstill and classes resume the next day. And I feel that uh, all of what they are saying, student politics being banned, are violating the students' right. I feel that it will, it will actually be abolished or avoided. So I feel that it's, it's actually a violation on their constitutional right. Thank you. Thank you, Chupo. Um, great insight. Um, let, me, let me announce here quickly that um, the, 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 the CPP, the ANC, and Musa Belede portion of the LP issue a press release uh, today. Uh, hopefully, I thought we had a time, but no time. We'll talk about it. But essentially, I thought the press release had some 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 contradictions that they need to work up. Uh, key among that was uh, the fact that the the release is calling for for the um, the Supreme Court to mandate neck to use the census to do the demarcation. When in fact, the same release is also talking that the census. Uh, was fraudulent. I thought um, we can we can use that census for anything. That particular census has to be trash. It can be used to do any demarcation. It can be used to influence any electoral changes this year. That census is 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 bogus. It's a fiasco, and we will not use it to determine any demarcation this year. So let me just register that. Now let's move to this but, thing. But, 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 but quickly, that's where you get to know sometimes. That's why it's frustrating. Sometimes you just, you just figure that the people in opposition are a bunch of serious people, some of them. We have all questioned what transpired with our census process. Six political parties had a press conference, talk about that census and other issues. The ANC was not a part of it, but the public statements that were available suggested that the ANC, though they were not with the other parties, they felt the same way about the census. So how can you be questioning something that you said was fraudulent, not done properly, and you're asking the high court to ask the NEC to use the fundings of the census to do demarcation, which will eventually create new constituencies for the election? Something is happening here. I don't even get it. Does that make sense to anybody? How can, I be, how can I be questioning a piece of work 
and we all say the thing is not correct, and everybody hailed the opposition when it came down hard on it. Then a key sector of the opposition community say, use the same thing that we said is fraudulent to demarcate and create new constituencies for the election process. Man, something is not just right with like real opposition. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll pay attention to that. And let me also say, I email while we're talking, I email uh, Professor Larry Topa. I'll try to reach out to Ezekiel Pajibo and see whether we can get them on Monday. Um, Daniel, you need to make some effort too to get that. Uh, let's see what we can get them on Monday to to give to talk about some historical insight about what happened in Bella Bella Yella, the role of the student community and their perspective on this uh, ban of student politics. I'll make some effort over the weekend to see what I can get them. I'll send a message to to Ezekiel and see whether I can get him. I already emailed uh, Dak. I'll send him a message on WhatsApp and see whether we can get them. Now, the let me let's talk about this issue. The president comes to the U.S. Um, he le he left Liberia today. He travels um, to the UAE and then the uh, the US. Uh, what are you What are you guys hearing? Um, and, and what do you think? And, and and one of the things we need to pay particular attention to is that the president trip is happening at the time when one you had the uh, the guy responsible, uh, the nephew guy responsible for. Um, corruption in in, 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 in in the U.S. government visiting Liberia when you also had the CIA boss. The CIA boss made a brief a brief stop in Monrovia. Um, we're getting signals that uh, Washington have had their own reservation with what is happening in the government um, and, 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 and a lot of stuff happening. So this visit is more so in that regard. So we, we want to keep our antenna up and uh, pay keen attention to some of these visits. Um, Pia and everybody else, do you have any, any thoughts on this? If not, uh, we can move to the um, to the Gloria Scott issue and, and talk about it. I do not have a single appetite to promote a useless trip. Exactly. When we are making these trips, we talk about it, we only grant him publicity. He, 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 he just squander taxpayers' money, make these useless trips, go up to the own resort, and we need to talk. Uh, I mean, your, your, your whole president traveling is no news for a president. The poor Darlington Collins is traveling to Canada, he goes to Australia, he goes to Germany, he has a major tour. It's news. Because say, well, what's happening with the little boy? Is it, is, it that he's washing, <laughs> is it that he's washing his hands clean and eating with kings and queens? <laughs> you know the man? Let that one old man, one old the, man who's traveling from place to place, having useless trips to go with his son. Honestly, it doesn't worth my time, and I'm not interested in talking about we are coming to America. That's going to be posting pictures on New York. Maybe faster. It's a useless restaurant. The But can I just go to this um Useless talking about it. I um, mean, like, you're around 6 p.m. The government of Liberia, the family of Gloria Scott received a communication from the government of Liberia. In that communication, the government indicated that uh, she, meaning the government, intends to conduct an autopsy on the body of, of the late uh, Shalom Musu. The government say by Tuesday they will they will want the uh, family to assemble where they will conduct an autopsy uh, 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 on the party. Well, we've been following this um, incident at, at, at uh, former Chief Dr. Scott resident, and there, have, there has been a lot of speculation, twists and turns in this thing. Um, claims, counter claims. Uh, uh, Valley Teller has disappeared. The name Valley Teller, who can no longer hear by it, has disappeared. The, uh, the, um, the MCC gone silent on this matter. The police and all these uh, conspiracy theorists, uh, theorists have begun to throw out insinuations that there could be a possible internal disagreement going wrong and all of these kinds of things. What, what, you know, um, a top six, and Darlington, you, 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 you into um, some of these, a top six can add to, Tell me who killed anybody. It just it's just for the cause of death. You cannot say 
come for pain. It was Stephen who committed the act. It, 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 it just say the person died as a result of. Uh, we've had these at Toxis, um, whether it was um, Princess Copo and other people. We saw what the outcome. Princess Copo, um, the, the the pathologist to all, and and this pathologist have come on a strong criticism by uh, Martin Colley on grounds that um, he's not a pathologist. He 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 he. He may have have read the medicine, but he's not a, a full-fledged pathologist. And so we saw how his report on the cause of death of uh, Princess Copa was heavily challenged. They said she died of uh, complicated tuberculosis. Um, people thought that, well, you can have tuberculosis, but something might have induced that to tobacco loses. Apparently, it may have reacted with some some external chemical elements that will cause the person to just go into that immediate attack. You know, because every human being in the little biology we know have, because the virus is um, is airborne, you can't escape it. But it, it it's, it's mostly recessive in many of us. It's it's it's, it's a recessive virus in many persons. The tobacco loses virus recessive. If you're exposed to a sustained period of that virus, then it become, it become, it overwhelms you. So apparently something might have facilitated that inducement to cause her to go into, into, into that shot. So there was the point everybody thought. But when you, when you look at Dalton and, and, and Jerry, especially uh, two of you and then Pia, when you look at the whole Gloria Mususcat case and all of what is happening, the claims, counterclaims, all of what we know, what is your impression about the entire case so far? What do, what, what do you make of it? Yes, yeah, Stephen. Uh, you know, the first thing, like you said, to establish what? Because the police, the government, family members have established, everybody is not saying that the girl, you know, they didn't stop the girl. The girl was stopped several times, but the government has been defending that how somebody who carry gun will use net. So what the cause of death has been established and acknowledged by everybody? Or is it part of their political game again to, you know, to try everything to try to put a case against the, the family? Because the people say, oh, the girl was stabbed. It being the medical report says that. The government, the police, everybody say, oh, they want to know that. So what you want to establish? Everybody know the cause of death. Who? Who the person? The police should be able to tell us how they stop police intervention to say stand down, according to, you know, uh, Castavaria and other people. Exactly. So, uh, as, uh, as John, as John uh, Bandy is saying, the cause of death is starting. The person will start. So what other, yeah. what other, what other cause? Exactly. What other what cause you want to do? So we want to know. Let them check. Let them check the article, the communication train, and many other things that took place. Why the police? They say the man lied that he took. I don't, know if, I don't know if for the five minutes they responded. But then anyway, after three hours before the police could intervene. So these people that are being accused, why you are not placing them on an investigation, but you are protecting them, then you want to come out and say you want to conduct an autopsy. An additional thing I want to say is, so when did the government realize that an autopsy should be conducted? Is it the man who always said he have legal talk? Because you notice that it was, after Mama Malou made all the reckless comments against a woman, he made all the reckless comments, then he came up with a recommendation that there must be an autopsy. So how can we trust an autopsy process that came as a result of Mama Malou attacking the lady and calling for an autopsy report? I mean, did you follow that? The Ministry of Justice kept quiet on the matter, on the matter, even when the acting minister appeared before the Senate. All he was concerned about was i mean or, or or how do you call it whether people are supposed to carry arms and this that and he said he was not clue with certain authority to speak to certain things so the ministry of justice did not come up with any statement until mobile molu spoke in a denigrating manner to the former chief justice trying to make things to look like 
it is the lady or the family that did some when he indicated that oh i mean well, for ritualistic purposes and all of that which they are con they continue to deny so then the Ministry of Justice said, I conduct a transfer to establish what? Look, we see, they put you stop joking with this country. The security of this country is in the hands of these people. But they care less about our citizens. People are dying everywhere. Every place you go low, they ain't get people. You go low, though, we have a, a limited manpower. With all the budgetary support that they are getting, they get logistical support. Yeah, it may not be to the expectation, but they could be able to do something, but they've been politicized. So allegations coming from Councillor Verdia should be totally investigated. We are not here to come with our time behind our autopsy report to say, oh, the same thing, uh, Princess Cooper died, they see that TB and all the kind of stuff. You understand me? Gifty Laman and Messi, President said, making fun in the car, having man, woman business. All these kind of stuff. They've been political always. Everything, the whole thing, nothing can come out of it. So they should stop wasting our time. And I think the, the family should resist any autopsy. They should don't call for autopsy. It's a waste of time, you know, to make us forget about whatever the issues are. The key issues are who perpetrated the act. Is that about how the person died as a result of the act? So, I mean, we need to be serious. The government continues to waste our time. You listen to the contradiction from the police. They need to explain. At some point in time, they will say, oh, we talked to the woman, and she now wants to cooperate. The woman even took a part of time, went to the police station. She left from there. People start, elements of the government started posting. You know how, you know, for Rachel listed days and mobile police spoke. So, I mean, this is not the kind of leadership that we have promised, for God's sake. This is not a leadership that citizens will feel insecure by six o'clock, everybody gone, and this, that. That's why when I listen to the U.S. ambassador, when he said, oh, uh, I mean, people in the diaspora are instigating something, but you are emphasizing reckless corruption and bad governance has reflected in the many international reports. Yeah, then we are only saying the same thing. But he did not also mention that bulk of the issue about the economy being, you know, sponsor. People are coming from the remittances from abroad are playing very key role in terms of driving our economy. He did not say that. So how can you say we're causing trouble when we are saying the same thing? You say the government is recklessly corrupt. And we are saying the same thing. These are some of the things. Buy him on red reports. The reports are all available. So, I mean, I thought the ambassador needed to say that too, that the monies that are running the economy right now, out of people building their houses, out of people are feeding their families. So the government just trying to find means and continue to do what they are doing. That's why they're joking with the Labyrinth people, calling for autopsy. And, you know, it's, 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 it's unacceptable. The family should not accept that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Darlington. Thank you, Stephen and Jerry. I mean, a few things here quickly. So let me just say for the record that it is not within the purview of the family to agree to an autopsy or not. When a crime is being commissioned, it is it is committed against the state, especially in solving murder. But here is the public, you know, contention about this issue. Yes, Stephen. Oftentimes in our country, especially under the WIA administration, it is the family who will be crying and say, we want an autopsy report. And the government will be downplaying an autopsy. Here you have this government pretending as if they have the capacity or they have the, the pathologist with the technical training in commissioning these autopsy report. Most of the autopsy report under the WIA administration have been questioned, not just by Martin Colley on the academic side, but you have the legs of even professional colleagues, of uh, uh, legs of uh, Dr. Rockefeller Cooper, who have questioned most of these autopsy report, speaking into the, into the detail and science of it. Uh, uh, Justice Carter have alleged that she saw somebody enter her place and stab her daughter. We already identified this cause of death. Except the government is trying to tell us that an eyewitness account who was on the scene could not have been a credible witness. Except that's what the government is trying to tell us. This government is saying you want to do an autopsy report. There's nothing wrong with you want to do an autopsy report. But I hope that we are administration keeps the same energy in resolving different 
the multiple murders in our country. When people die now, going forward, with the justice county, when there is a death in our country, the government should announce that it will perform an autopsy report. Since we have the capacity now, because we already identified the cause of death. You say you want to go ahead and do an autopsy report. Let us look at something. Since this girl died, how police have been even handling the investigation, the chain of custody, how have they been managed to gather evidence and how have they been able to probe more into the investigation? You have the, the ruling party chairman issuing statements that possibly the, uh, Madam Scott might want to be engaging in ritualistic activity. It's been more than eight, nine years since Gloria Musu Scott retired from liberal politics. The last time she was senator in my degree. It's been really? long. So what, what could possibly be her motive to want to engage in ritualistic activities? She's not going to an election. It is you people who are in election that we are finding babies in the streets of Monrovia with past extracted. That should be the battle. You hear you say you want to co commission an autopsy report. There's nothing wrong. But let me say here, I think this government is trying to do something, Stephen. They want to put a separate narrative in the public that will perform an autopsy report to bring closure into what happened at Justice Scott Place. And now the family, they are saying that they are not cooperating. What happened to the autopsy report of the three missing boys? Stephen, the families could not even identify the, 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 the remains of their relatives. You know, when people live, Stephen, they are distinguished. One of the way criminal investigation work, there are distinguished markings on human beings. For example, somebody will say, oh, when you see Daniel Collins, he has a distinguished mark on his left leg, you know, like a scar or something. The family could not even recognize the distinguished markings on their relatives. The government brought people completely different and performed an autopsy report and wanted to force the report down the throat of this family. This woman alarmed. The first two times her woman on her attack, she told the Liberian National Police that people, uh, 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 unscrupulous individual, visited her house. The very same LNP quote unquote did a, a risk assessment and said she gets security and everything was okay. It's not major of a deal. Here we are. A grieving family will have to go through burying their daughter. And now we have to entertain a government, a useless government shenanigans. Of bringing in an autopsy report, Stephen, we don't have the capacity. I don't even show whether we have the the requisite, you know, a, 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 a lab in terms of performing these autopsy. So what is happening now with these remains? I mean, you may not even get the biolo the, 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 the the biological content that you that you that you will need to have from these autopsies. You want to establish the cause of death. The woman told you that her daughter was died. But here you are, you want to play politics, you want to put a separate narrative in the public. And I think it's okay. I mean, so moving forward, the government of Brown now should keep that very same energy when there is a murder. We want now to see the government of Brown through the Ministry of Justice announcing that they will perform an autopsy report. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Pia, your, 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 your take on this whole issue. But look, the first thing is when the murder was reported, a couple of days thereafter. Didn't the government arrest people who they say were contractors doing some work in Glorious Scarf's home and charged them with murder? So, if you grab those people at that time to charge them with murder, it means you have done because charging doesn't come from the blue sky. If you investigate something and before you reach the conclusion that the limit peer is being charged, it means you've gathered all of the evidences and you believe the limit peer is culpable. So you don't charge him, and then you have to use the code of law to prove that your charges against the limit peer are substantive, they are factual. And all of that is taking place through the trial process at the end of which somebody will be out of guilty or acquitted. So if you already charge people, so what, what other investigation the government has been doing? If they already reached that conclusion where they charged that old man, old Gisi man, and I know that a children or a who then charged and said they were the ones who killed. 
They they release them. No, but you can charge people and that job say you release them. If you charge them, then you form the facts. You got all of the clues. That's why you charge them. So you can charge them, eventually you release them, and so on. You drop the charges. And then eventually you come at one point, having charged people, and whether you drop them or not, you come at another point and say, Julius Scott is a person of interest. What are you talking about? You come at another point, we want autopsy. All those people that died at the day autopsy on, what are the findings of the autopsy? Princess Cooper won't end up in complete Wahala when they said she died from tobacco loss and all of that. And like the other guys have said, so after say you do your after say the, 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 the it's already reported that the girl was starved. I don't need after say to know whether somebody was starved. If I had a chance, even ordinarily as I am to look at the body, I would see all the starving margo on the person. So with that after say now, we ought to tell us that okay, she was starved. We got DNA sample, we got everything, and the 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 persons whose prints matches the starving is Darlington calling, they got that capacity. If not, why are they wasting people's time? So the only reason why the government is dragging this case and they've come to this far and playing all these politics is because. Councilor Jerome Voyager came and said that Jefferson Kochi sent people to kill. If there was no initial accusation from anywhere, printing thinkers at somebody like Jefferson Kochi in the government, everything that happened with this case would have been done. But they see the need to play all the tricks they're playing because number one, Jerome said the killer was one valid teller. <laughs> he was sent by Jefferson Kochi. Journalists ask Jefferson Koji, do you know any value teller? Does he work with a city hall? Koji said that was not an interest for him to discuss. Subsequently, the same city hall that could not answer whether the new value teller, whether he, work, he, work, he were working with them, they brought value teller at a press conference, <laughs> flanked by MCC officials. You want this man to have a press conference, but he can't answer one question. When they ask questions, he's fumbling, then MCC people jump in there and try to answer for him. But you say you don't know the man. They ask you whether you knew the man, whether he's in the employ of the MCC, you say you didn't know. So these are all suspicious connections. Firstly, you are not prepared to identify yourself with a man that you knew him. Then it came to be the truth that you knew him. Then you brought him to a press conference. Then he goes to the police station, he's again guarded and flanked by MCC officials. Generally trying to ask him questions, it's MCC people who are interfering. You bring one fake old man, you say that the man father. The first three words that come from the Omen mall, trying to lead a disaster, you push the Omen away. You see value telling, you run away. All these things expose then that, yes, there could be a need to think about what Jerome said because these people said they didn't know value telling. But yeah, yeah, nah, value telling working with that. Check then came and explain all the history as to how value telling got connected to them. So it is that struggle to try to exonerate the accusation against Jefferson Koji that has pushed them into doing all these things to depress somebody who is already depressed by the killing of her daughter. No respect for people in our country. You deal with somebody who is former chief justice serving at the highest level of the justice system. You play with her. You have not even realized that the entire Labrain Bar Association is lying up behind her. Where are you going? You can find her. This is no ordinary woman. Beyond serving her chief justice and all the legal experiences she had, even though she was she was, she was, she was getting older, she still had the zest to get support in the law. She came to the Harvard Law School. That's somebody who knows better. What game are you trying to play with her? You're gonna be caught up in your own dream, in your own game. It's just sad that while she's willing, she's weeping, you're adding onto her misery. You're not allowing the innocent child or, or, or the innocent child to rest in peace. 
You play with a dead body, you play with football. You have it completely exhausted before they even have the chance to pay last respect. The police is a disgrace. Yeah, we know you 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 you, you don't want to have any interest in investigating Jefferson Koji. Then just let it go, let all the other ones have gone. Instead of trying to harass and intimidate, suppress and subdue the justice who should be weeping. And you heard the family. I read a few news people article where the family was saying, we are in the dark. How can you keep the family in the dark over the death of their own daughter? How can these people be so wicked? Who's in the mansion? Say a pharaoh or a king Nebuchadnezzar? Which one? Which one of the kings are even more wicked than the other? First class, we are in all days, the first lady. Only things that concern money she run, she, she's running behind. Are you paying attention to all this happening under your husband's reign? Or have you simply become a Jezebel? Even a wicked king to plunge the nation into total chaos and anarchy. Is that why it is? The day of reckoning comes. Look all the power you can do it now. But the day of reckoning comes. The things you're doing today, you will come. Do I remember King Nebuchadnezzar? Walk on his belly, his knees, his hands in the bush like an animal. I remember how Pharaoh, having seen the children of Israel skipping, sent his chariots, his houses, his army, and everything. The Red Sea became their grave. These fit are awaiting. Agents of evil in our country today. It takes some time. It may look like the, the, the operating with infinity. Justice comes when it shall come. We've seen it in the past. We'll see it tomorrow. We you account. Sorry that Gloria Scott and the family got to be going through all the kind of harassment from the state. Just for the naked quest of trying to exonerate somebody who's been accused, not even by the Scott family. The Scott family did not accuse anybody. Jerome Voda is the one who accused Koshi. Y'all get him in 72 hours. What has happened to that 72 hours? I said, Y'all nonsense talk. You take news, I mean, radio before you, and you talk, you say, Oh, I 72 hours. You don't do this. Anymore. What has happened after the 72 hours? You say you have money. I already talked to your lawyer. The man will be suing the U.S. Jerome's still sitting down here. We've seen no lawsuit announced against him, but you're harassing the innocent woman whose daughter was killed. Isn't this wickedness? Why this heroic behavior? Why have we got Satan himself presiding over our nation? If these things don't motivate our people, to stand up in everything we do. And that is why for me, Stephen, I'm watching our leaders. I just said from the beginning of the show, I'm deeply concerned <laughs> with the way they pro they, they're proceeding with their running mate issue. Making it a low level, some kind of a process that is on the wheel of a turtle's belly. And we are just hoping that after you do all these delays, after you kill all the appetite, don't bring us something that may lead to the total collapse of the opposition. Because then what it does, posterity will hold them responsible for failing to remove a curse that currently hangs over our country. If I, Jerry I wanted to be president, I knew that five years ago, but now I already know who I want to run with. You don't create the kind of bottlenecks we have that would make even the people who find themselves as contenders become antagonists to themselves. 
somebody to the extent that in the end when one of them is chosen, anarchy erupts. And you are now focused on mitigating the anarchy than being focused on going to the elections. Because the people depend on you to solve all these evils. The people depend on you to ensure that the demonic regime is removed and that a pure accountability sets in. What you're doing, how you're managing your processes, has not been encouraging. It kills momentum, discourages the people. But in the end, if that's why it is, you know, even if evil regime remains, they're not going to forgive you. And it's not about you as a person. It's your generation, your people, your family, your children's children will not be easily forgiven when you fail to provide the leadership that is required during this period of redemption. A redemption that the people need so dearly. A redemption that the people cannot wait to see delayed. And you're not showing them the sound that you read. Whether you are ANC, whether you are who I'm talking to, all of them who are opposition. Because, and I'm stressing the opposition because, like I said to you, I support JMB. But what happens if JMB doesn't survive a first round? If you support we are, no. If it is Gunblow who is in our second round, I will support him. If it is Cummings, I will support him. If it is Simon Freeman, I will support him. And because I will support him or her or whoever comes to that second round, I'm very concerned about how they are managing these processes of finding their running mates. And who are the individuals that are being considered? And why is your slow pace process? I'm concerned. We can stop everything that happened to Blue Sky and others by the way we approach these processes leading to the elections. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. Thank you. Very thoughtful. Um, uh, 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 Stephen, I, I wanted to find out. Since we listen to the entire discourse from the Liberian Senate, people lecturing, expressing their stuff, what has come out from the Liberian Senate? You see how discouraging it is about the whole global Muslim situation. Since Senator Dillon spoke passionately as a fighter, as a leader, and some other senators, you know, that were concerned, how far the Senate have gone? I'm told uh, Friday today, I think they closed also. With all these things. So that's why when I listen to them lecturing about the students, you know, all of them talking about the UA issue, it's just another lecture that people will hear them. They are not making sure to provide for the security of the state because it is their constitutional responsible, I mean, our responsibility in keeping with Article 34 to provide for the security of the state. But they said that citizens are dying, everything, you know, I just want to yeah, like, yeah. call their attention. You know, to that because it's very important. There are three branches that run in this country. That's why Jeremiah could say 105 persons that were elected are the ones that govern the affairs of our country. When one branch is sleeping, wide into the other branch, the other two branches. I think Liberia is heading for trouble if we are not careful because we are other people are going beyond the, their bound, they are pushing the citizens so high. To the extent that they are affecting every sector. So it's, it, it, it's something that we should not take for fun. All right. Jupo, uh, announce the normal. Let's take a few calls um, so that we can. Uh, can... So there's the link, the numbers to 42 uh, 8870436060 and those in the diaspora you can call us up on plus one four zero one six eight 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 two six six plus one four zero one six eight 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 two six six against you it is seven Zero four thirty six sixty zero eight eight seven zero four thirty six sixty and zero seven seven zero forty seven twenty nineteen zero seven seven zero forty seven twenty nineteen and those in the diaspora can call us up on plus one 
0401688266. And let me start from my side. Please go ahead, caller. Hello? You have on a program. Please go ahead. Yeah, same mobile phone. My phone called you. Go ahead, Mr. Mobile. You have on the program. Yeah, man, I appreciate uh, those on the show tonight, especially uh, Mr. Nippon. Most of them are talking, he concentrates more on the education system. And I'm one person who is very interested in that. Currently, our, our system is fast, always behind instead of away from. Uh, all kinds of our classes now becoming more of women. In my day, in most of our public schools, especially in the city area, you see 140 students in a single class. So I have been one person who has the opinion that Liberia did not do well to subscribe to the work they did. Because we don't have the class in environment. Classes are congested, uh, teachers are not satisfied. You see that uh, most of our teachers are not trained. Uh, there is huge backing of free teachers, especially in the senior high school. So, subscribing to an international event when nationally we don't have the proper mentality for assessment, I just feel uh, it's not just fair to our students. So, now you see that with the current economic condition, when the students go for the world, you see that most of them will fail. And when they fail, how many of them uh, parents can be on their phone? 8,000 and 20 dollars so or 12,000. That went out for visitor. So you will see that after the next four or five years, most high school graduates, uh, people who start for work will be sitting and they cannot enter university or graduate from university because they have been denied because they don't have the team to even visit the work. So I'm one person who thinks that we don't have the educational environment. Currently, we don't have the educational environment for the work. Even why I was there, well, that the administrator is there. Is that even for the capacity of the research? In my case, you will see that a wire will be sitting one and then in a piece, the setting of banner or one setting to, uh, to monitor the test. You will see at the point of analysis, you will see that most of the students, when you know, the papers are being commented, you will hear that there was collusion. I you think there was not a collusion where no proper monitoring, teachers are not getting one proper assessment in a rural classes, then you subscribe there. It's a start of very students who eat and 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 eat let me tell you, apologize for the poor quality of my boss. The issue of putting stop to student politics is that they respect and slap into the faces of the university students. Politics and economics are intimately related. Whether it is a matter of access, budget deficit, healthcare programs, or trade, economic. Are in things, economic, are in things of political controversy and governmental decision making. So, those that appreciate politics on the university students, they also get in the rush, right, the room to also analyze the economy of our country to distinguish or distinguish politics from economics. They will discuss the politics and bring in the economic aspect. And identify the ills, and then tell you the government will recommend. Th thank you so much. Thank you. Today, and it's a road issue. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank everyone you that and yourself as the panelist. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please go ahead. And let me say good evening from my end. This is TJ Lamar. Let me say good evening to Stephen and good evening to Mr. Pi and the rest of the panelists. Look. This thing that we're doing in Liberia will have to be very clear. This photo all land is talking about. Liberia, we got no base, no uh, 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 base to see a uh, Liberia with this city in Kenya or Sierra Leone will vote on land. This land thing here, we have to stop it. The opposition will have to come together. The second thing here is that I just learned from the other side. They said,
faire, ça ne pouvait faire that. The election commission now gave report for the last election now here, they're turning to money. The 10 million I thought of gave, he's not giving that money, but they can get report. I think that's a waste of time. The, like, the people do have no need to have this election. And let me say the president, we are, you have yeah, everything to this country, violating our laws. But here, the local law will not let you violate it and go free. On October 10, when there's no election, they get ready for it. Put on government. Thank you. Your trade is doing that. We know you people, your anti Thank you Yes, hello. Uh, this is this, this is Peter C. Dopo Jr. Calling from the Philippines. Yeah, go ahead. You live. Make your point. Yes, so I want to say thanks for for having me on the line and thanks to the panelists. I was sent in the Philippines along with nine of my colleagues from the University of Liberia last year, October. And since last year, I have not received a dam from religious. Now we came in the Philippines on the World Bank Iswas project that is harmonizing statistics uh, in West Africa region. Liberia has a share of 30 million. It is of that money, faculty of the University of Liberia was sent to the Philippines to study masters in statistics so that we can go back to Liberia and have a, you know, a kind of a, a continuous, continual running of the program at the University of Liberia. Last year, three months, we could not get our staffing. We call, we call, we could not get anything, including our dormitory fees. I led the guys. We appear on fabric radio informing the Liberian people calling on the government to intervene. Based upon that, Legion decided to, to fight back for me. In February of this year, they sent nine persons staffing, dormitory fees, visa fees, and everything, which is like $2,750 each person. And they did not send me a dime claiming that I took, I took the information on Facebook. Since then, I have not received a dam. I'm in the Philippines, I'm stranded. I'm depending on nobody for support. Only this project has brought me here. I'm also an employee of the Universal Liberia. Universal Liberia is not paying me. I got employment October last year. Universal Liberia is not paying. January, they, they did not pay my salaries because they were to be giving us 50%. I did not receive any money in January. I did not receive money for February. This month is March. I don't have anything I'm depending on. So I'm really calling on uh, government in Liberia. I'm calling on maybe the representatives, the Senate, so that they, they inquire from leaders because you can send me in the Philippines for, for an international program and you know the country sent me in the Philippines I didn't come here on my own and then I can't get support I can't get support at all at the, the school dormitory I was in I was asked out of the dormitory because the time I had to pay the time the, the time expired I came outside to get a, a private dormitory very expensive things everything expiring like this March my visa fees everything expiring this March I don't know what to do Legend is not communicating. I've communicated with Legend on several occasions to the, the, the financial consultant, Emmanuel Delami. I have not received one response from Emmanuel Delami. I have written the dean of the science college at the University of Liberia, the chairperson, the president, the VPAA, and all of them. None of them is, is responding to my communications on a daily basis. So thanks ever so much for having me on your show. I wish to, to, to appear to explain in detail at any time of, of, of the trust. Thank you very much. Okay, so you, your situation is sad. It's a human interest story. That's what I kept you on for long. Normally call us at one minute, but you have a serious case and it needed to be heard. So that's what I gave you that chance. Uh, I see your name here. Your, I, I will make further contact with you, uh, but uh, thank you for making your case known. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want to take call if you have it. Put on the lamp, please go ahead. 
हेलो गुड इवनिंग हेलो 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 इलाफ ने प्रोग्राम पे गुआ है इन्हें चार्ज करें आपको अपने फ्रेंड्स को मिलने थे पता पंकज से इस दूर हैव यू फ्रॉम पंक काउंटी हियर प्लीज गुआ है चीफ यू हैव वन मिनट या सर ले पावन टू जीएमबी द पावन है द वी वी आर फॉर ऑफ 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 ओपन पॉकर बट वी आर जस्ट लिसनिंग 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 फॉर द द द रनिंग मेट एंड सम ऑफ वी गो इन द ग्रुप व्हिच इज टू आल्सो हैव टू कैंपेन फॉर हिम बट वी लिसनिंग ऑफ द टुडे वी हैव यर गेटिंग एनीथिंग सो दे गेन They announced a running mate. Okay, Chief. So I, 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 I'm sure happening soon. Yes, time. Thank you so much, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, this person is live on the line. Please quiet. All right. My name is uh, Pastor John B. Frank here, yeah, and uh, from Gambasa County. From Basa. Please go ahead, Chief. Yeah, okay. I want to appreciate the first uh, service to you, and I also want to appreciate my king brother. Let me be here. Two things I want to quickly speak to. Um, the issue of the university. Uh, marginalizing the university students in particular, marginalizing what they have learned, but demonstrating what they have learned it is wrong. I think the university what they should do is to cancel political things. I think mean, that's the best thing because you can't stop the guys from particularizing. Uh, what they have learned, so that as you do, if you don't want to threaten politics on campus, then stop political things. And I think that would be the best thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Call on the language. Hi, my name is William Jara, and I just called to speak to unfolding events at the uh, University of Liberia, especially in light of the recent. Uh, me him uh, violence that was uh, uh, that happened as a result of that was provoked by uh, Akara's grid um, and subsequently the university uh, turned down on the students on student politics. Uh, what is going on in Liberia is very troubling. It's appalling because we have people in leadership. We just don't know what they are doing. They are doing the wrong things, and as a result, they are dragging the country down a path that will be regrettable. Uh, instead of getting to the root cause of the problem, they are circumventing the problem and 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 and, and addressing it in in ways that are not right. You can't. Then student politics. Students were being responsible for the provocation, for the mayhem, for what happened, what took place. So why should the student be punished? Why should the student be denied their right to exercise their democratic franchises? I mean, it should be resisted, man. It should be resisted. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it should really be resisted. This Thank is from Kofo. Thank you very much. You both go ahead. Hello. Yes, uh, you live on the program. What's your name? Where you calling us from? All right, yeah, something about the Basa man. Uh, the Basa guy. Please go ahead. Yeah, let him let him interpret for us. All right, I've been listening your call anyway. Ah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, Daniel is not here because Daniel is the one who normally calls you. Right? He's not here tonight. But just go ahead. It's good. Uh, you live on the program already. Okay, I'm going to get it. I believe my friends say then they have been told that uh then we will have also rattled my friends with their one day it's my bad list my friends with one day it's just like my bad one they didn't make it my friends with their one day it's just like a little bit they grow they marry some of them they just like a little bit they want to be able to 
chef de santé de mon chef de santé, il n'y a pas de bruit. Parce que les bras sont là, ils sont tous les deux. 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 Kuna Joseph, you want to 
Thank you so much. Let me tell you, call on you, Quickly call on the line from the US. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I just like to contribute to what uh, we're talking today. Uh, as a media, where I'm a former student here in Nigeria, um, I'm a uh, president of the Kipa University School here. Um, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the university authorities on the things of student politics. In as much that. I don't support the way our students behave when it comes to politics, student politics. Then uh, there is the party on the campuses of the University of Agro will not help the problem. What I think they can do is to create programs and environments that will help the students because I see that a lot of our young children, our young students in Agro are more focused on politics instead of you know some creative ventures. So I, I disagree with all uh, university authorities. I don't know who can pass in them because we are in election year. Why we want to bear student politics in election year? Who's who, who's giving the university that kind of advice? Are they taking advice from the from the government? This uh, is uh, the nursing really consulting well with the folks around there. Because in the election year, you build student politics is that you are creating a lot of problem for the elections because there will be skirmishes all over the place. So the, the, the young children will always go on the street, they will block the road, police will come in, you will put a lot of them, and you just want to have chaos all around the place. So for me, this is not the family is not right, and two, the policy is not right. Create something. I still see the university, no, oh, Mr. Pia, I intend to be like, one day I went on the university, oh, on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Oh, Mr. Pia, when you see students in this country, you will always want to contain your education from where you come from. Because the students are so young, 18 years old, they are so focused. They, I mean, their utterance is their own self, the kind of thing they do in college. It's far different from what we do in Nigeria. But being a student politics at the same time, that's what they have to find it. It's just when there's nothing to the problem. I don't know who's, who's taking this decision. So I just want to guess, as a former student leader, I don't agree. I think the time is wrong. And I want to call the university authorities to, to reset down that, that decision because it's not going to work. It's just going to be more problems in the country. So I want to thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Jibo, let me take this color, which would be um, the the lower side of what something money just did. Uh, Koto Balayan on behalf of the the Loma people to speak to the Loma people just as something spoke so eloquently to the Basso people. Uh, so yes, uh, Madam Balayan, you are on, and I guess it's all about talking to the Loma people. Yeah, I want to say thanks to you guys in, uh, in the class we do that for your effort made in discussing the issue of Liberia. And quickly, let me go to my Loma section. Loma Gita Gata, Wanaya, Poko Vriba, Glab, Manga, Gobu, Manga, Nitete, as a Pelewu. Maga, Kufu, where the Tukovre, Tama Kovre, or any Egada, the party attending the Kovre, Tabana, Mu, Tama, the representative of Anna, Eluga, and Matthew Blue, the Quaga, a Kara's grave. Lalin <laughs> I can't contain Sana So I've got my name to another, the packet of winners, the cattle, the cattle tonight, the twenty two, but no, the pen. So I don't know who, I don't make a cowl, I will play with Twaga, Ome Waka. Now go in twenty two, Ome Waka, Mel Play, what tough fighting I am, got to make a cowl, I will learn. Twaga, what is all that, my mother? Thank you guys so much. Thank you very, very thank you, much for your thank great, you, great contribution to what we do here. So, Tupo, let's, Tupo, let's make sure we get a guy from Bonkam to the Pelagar next week. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I actually been talking to him and he actually consented to, to help him so I can get him over okay. uh, next yeah, Friday. We'll talk, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk off air. So, for me, I finished. I said, you both got one or two no, more. No, 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 I guess in here, I finished. I mean, I am finished. Yeah, I got to, I got to, um... So, guys, in a minute each, let's let's wrap up. We've, we've, gone, we've gone almost three hours. Um, to Paul, let's go. Then Jerry, Darlington, then Pia will take us home. The guy say, yeah, and yeah. listen, they got read it, read it, read it, yeah, Solomon, you yeah, guys, they're picking Jupa, really flushy and shiny with his Marco air kind of glassy on the face. <laughs> Hey, why they own Jupo bag? Another person commented earlier before that one said Jupo taking Robin Bennett serious. Why they own yeah, Jupo bag? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, let 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 call it a night. Jupo, you go then. Uh, Jerry, if you stay around, then Darlington, then Pia, mini each guys. Let 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 go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually grateful to the team again, and I mean another great show. Mm, yeah, and happy weekend to all of us. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Jared, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. I mean, you're in the street now already, eh? Yes, uh, because you know the time, the train is 8 o'clock, so... Uh, yeah, but, but, yeah, second, yeah, wrap up. Yes, it was a wonderful show, and uh, thanks to all of you for the wonderful contribution. Uh, we are encouraging the students that uh, we say no, you are not alone in this struggle, because we are should not come and change the course of politics in our country. People are paid due for all of what our students are doing, so we cannot uh, uh, reintroduce the dark days. And that uh, we encourage the government to abandon that plan because it's undemocratic. It does not speak well of our democratic uh, profile. So I encourage the students, to those that got wounded you during the process, uh, we are in prayer with you. In whatever way we can reach out, we'll try to reach out. Thank you. It was a wonderful show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Darlington. Thank you, Stephen, and, uh, and, and all of you, uh, Big Brother, Pia, Jupal, and Jerry. I think it was a great conversation. And let me say this to our people. We take up three, four hours on our busy schedule Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We have an opportunity in 2023, in six months or so for now, to give a country, a dying nation, Install in a new breed, in a new a new brand of, of leaders. The choice is us, it's ours to make. In 20, in 2023, we'll be afforded with our opportunity. There are lots of goods on the shelf. For us here, we support J and B, and we ask you to look deep and take some deep soul searching movement and understand where your country is. Liberia is for all of us, and where our country is going far below the abyss. It is only called now for all hands on deck so that we can, you know, get involved and rescue this dying country. As Intermiata in her, in her, her voter awareness uh, song says, if you're happy with the way things are, I mean, you don't need to register and vote or you can still register and, and, and retain the administration. But if you're unhappy with the way things are, there's a need for you to stay in the, in the queues and register to vote because it is only registering to vote. And you can have your new leadership that you so desire. Thank you, Stephen, and all of you. I'm here, and it's a good weekend. And and Stephen, you have a tendency of putting me on blast, but we will save that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Dalinto, I heard our I heard our comrade, the the man. Most of the people call the hero. I heard him publicly announce on his show today that go back to America and that he's officially moving back home. That was strange to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we talk. We talk. But yes. I mean, it, it, you know, let I me hope, say. I, I hope that is not a prelude to something, to something big being announced on his behalf. I hope not. because well, he's, just... he's, an active, he's an active player in the politics. And to be told, you cannot. I'm going to pick you. can we start? If I show you, I got to go. Push up. No, no, come here. <laughs> You cannot want to usher, you know, a, a question of leadership, especially where you know he's an active player in the politics and still on foreign skies. You cannot be able to to do that. You know, you, you can do so little, but you can you can accomplish a whole lot when your boots are on the ground. So yes, I mean, yes, Pedro will be, you know, I mean he still he still is. I mean, yeah, in the U.S., but he will his boots will be on on, on home soil. But there will be a lot of moving back and forth. We can see that for for a Yeah, you know, you you you're fixing it a bit, but what I heard him say loud and clear, bye bye America, I'm moving back home. But anyway, uh interesting. It just tells me that the brother is ready for perhaps 2023, and we look forward to see how it goes. The brother, uh, the brother came to school primarily. Yeah, brother, yeah, so we salute with I, I no, I'm not I'm not I'm not having an issue with it at all. I would just yeah, uh, I, I would just shock a little bit at the, the the announcement it tells me that maybe his whole mind, body, and soul is now in the homeland. In Liberia. But it's a good thing that we had these conversations. And let me warn Sawodo Nelson again. Ask some questions about Ben Roberts. Ask some questions about Paul Morgan. Ask some questions about past leaders of the university who allow the hands of tyrants to use them against innocent students and end up with the faith they end up with. Uh, you're a pastor, 
I mean, you can tell me that better, and you know that whatever a man sweat, that he shall reap. You can even tell me better that the wages of sins is death. I don't have to tell you that. So beware, be warned, because there are consequences to what you are doing. Our leaders don't keep the people in perpetual waiting. Uh, if, if you notice, you see some euphoria jumping down. People think they've reached the point where they want to be selling a ticket. They don't want to be selling an individual because that's part of the problem that Bureau has had. When you let people, it's all about those questions. It can be about government. Like whether you talk about government, all you talk about is we are, we are, we are, we are, we are. Because of how we define government, we get tied to one individual. So we can be continuously just moving in the process. There are a lot of level-headed people in the country who, who want to, to take their stance based on a ticket they see. They don't just want to take a stand because they like uh, Simeon Freeman, like Gonglo. They want to see who Gonglo is tying away. They want to see who Bwaka is tying away. They want to see, at that point when all these leaders will do that, then you see a different dimension of the politics. Then people who on the fence will say, okay, this is my side because I see the whole thing in full. And so that's why we keep calling on the leaders to, to do the right thing, man. Let, let, let's do the right thing. And then, for God, like Stephen Johnson, I know Darlington calling Lost here too. The last time they asked before, he said he didn't get time for football. The Champions League is on. I see a real dose. Chelsea versus Real Madrid. The good thing is I saw everything change. The last time, he came to Stanford Bridge and he ended at the Banabu. This time, he started at the Banabu. So Stanford Bridge will be a slaughterhouse. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. And the last time I be at the Stanford Bridge. So yeah, I you, I be you at, and I beat you at the Banabu 3 2 on your own side. Yeah, so you just qualified because there was some goal disparity, but I beat you, you beat me. But before yeah, then, no goal. This time, no away goal. So, before then, I put you out. You know that, right? The time we took the Champions League, yeah, I know. Yeah, the, okay. the COVID Champions League. Yeah, so we've been great. We've been great. And, and history yeah. will be repeated. And, 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 Chelsea, Chelsea, one of the things I've noticed for Chelsea, the year she's not performing domestically. Yeah. That when she can do the Champions League. League. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So watch out. Yeah, so that's so why I'm very married. careful. Well, I, hope, I got I some Madrid, stuff for Chelsea. So I, I hope Madrid really... tight team of bootstraps. They have to. They have to. They have to. We got to because that will be the only trophy we'll really be uh, contending for this year. But guys, it's been a great show. You know, I mean, the conversation was good. Uh, we had a wonderful time. Thanks to to you all, Darlington, to Paul, Pia, and, and Jerry um, for joining us. Thanks to all of our callers. Thanks to Samson and Koto for their contribution. We'd like to open it up. Uh, if you if we get the pellet person next week, uh, hopefully between now and uh, Friday, me and Jupal will conclude. With, so we'll be having Basso, Pele, and and uh, and Loma. If you if you want to volunteer, we need to, to, we need to work on we need to work on the crew version because my you. That's what I say. We so we are not very popular we, in the in the crew belt. Yeah, if but Dina, but but you can help us if you can find somebody who can speak. Uh, I will. And is I will. Supporting our cause, let let get volunteers to come up so that uh, we can all contribute. We're looking for volunteers. Somebody reach out to me about this crew. I will try to check my email. My, my messenger again and see how we can get it done. But it's been a great show. Let me say thanks to all of our close. Please encourage our people to register to vote. Yes, we need so to we register. To say, we registration we starts on Monday. Yeah, we stay three hours. We didn't tell anybody. We didn't encourage anybody. Yeah, to go registration register. starts on Monday. Uh, Monday. I beg you. We'll come here Monday. We'll sing that song from in the morning to in the night. Register to vote. Register to vote. Yep. Uh, that song we got to play. That anything me other song will play all through. Um, on Monday for us to register to vote. It's important for us to register to vote. If we don't register, we don't vote. Hey, Steven, if we don't let me, vote, let me, we don't let me say this. Uh, my old man is already registering to vote as she's dealt with the song. So I see coming with uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, okay, uh, 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 Pia. Senior one or the song? Oh, senior. Oh, Edwin Widow, not Jonathan Widow. Now, Edwin. Yeah, Edwin Widow. Yeah, I can probably, volunteer probably, to we do. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get in touch with you. To do the Gisima Loma version. What is Gisima Loma? Is it different from the Loma that Koto just spoke? It's a, it's a different yeah, kind of Loma. Yeah, different, different. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, Kobe Widow. We'll get in touch with you. So good. Uh, it's been a great show. Thanks to our radio station, Bushwa Radio FM ninety eight point one in Montserrado, Premier FM ninety eight point one in Bangabon County, Radio Duka FM eighty nine point one. 
in Grand Bassa County, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in uh, Vonjima Lofa County, Radio Joy Africa FM uh, 97.5 in Maggie, and of course, Voice of Gompa FM 106.5. It has been a great show. Let me say thanks to all of our folks in the comment section, all of you who share the show. We'd like to appreciate you. Thank you all for sharing the show. Um, we'd like to say thanks for your participation. Those who calling, we'd like to say thank um, for for your involvement. Yeah, uh, sufficient. Momo, I'll try to see how I can get the the uh, song. Galo, Galo, find somebody to do the mandingo for us, my man. Like, uh, Sam, um, y'all, y'all have put this thing together, all of us. Um, and uh, by the time we look Friday, we'll have at least all of the major tribes present. We can talk. We can talk for at least five minutes each, and we we'll do a summary of what we talk about. Um, it's been a great show. Um, good to see you all. Um, um, Rose, Rose, how are you? Um, it's good to see you too, Rose. Um, uh, Sam Odu, Safiatu, so hey boy, Eloya, Eloya, this time you get me a weekend. Well, we're coming to register. We'll, we'll keep in that classified. We'll be in town. Don't worry. We can't. Eloya, you put, you put getting a weekend quietly now. And you're not making declaration. Yeah, Safiatu, when I, when I announce what we're doing on the on our personal. Yeah. Registration to, but we'll, we'll or definitely will be a part of the election. We'll definitely vote. You put the people, uh, so people we'll, delivering now, and you're keeping it very quiet on the ground. You're not telling us <laughs> all, all the one, all the one to abandon you. Which one? Uh, I showed you cannot afford to abandon Jupor who's making a Jupor sacrifice. A, a yeah, yeah, I hope, oh, you're, I hope you're sending Jupor a weekend to the Friday. Uh, Morovia. Just send a man something there in Bangladesh. I let the man. Do, do a TV or phone over there. Regular. Do you know? Yeah, I don't see. What are you? Is it a man? 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 The man got a TV or phone over there. Regular. What Musu? I don't see Musu today. I don't. I don't see. I don't see Musu active. I don't see Tita Miata Yasia. I don't see them. I don't know what's going on with them. Yeah, I hope they. I hope they're okay. Yeah. So guys, yeah. let me let me play this song about ready Those for the vote. Your fix, your fix, you pour for the weekend. Those of you who can voluntarily, thank you. All right, guys, it's been a great show. Have a good one. Your power, go and register to vote. I said, go and register to vote. Cause that's your power Your power is in your head Go and register to vote I said go and register to vote Cause that's It's all